Good evening and welcome to the Ball Game Blitz TV show produced by Worthy Road Studios on USJ High School's Facebook page. I'm Seabass, your announcer this evening. Chuck Walker will be the color announcer for USJ broadcast this season. Any rebroadcast, transmission, editing, or further use of the Ball Game Blitz TV show without the written consent of Worthy Road Studios is strictly prohibited. Other high schools covered by the Ball Game Blitz TV show are Jackson Christian, TCA, and Trenton Peabody. And those games are broadcast to each high school's Facebook page. We also broadcast Union University home games for volleyball, basketball, soccer, softball, and baseball. And all of our ball game blitz games are archived to the Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel. Again, I'm Seabass, and I'll be the play-by-play announcer for USJ Games this year for Ball Game Blitz Show on USJ High School Facebook page. Our director tonight is Eris Hollingsworth. And... Adrena Hicks is our replay operator. Our producer is Paul Schulze. On cameras tonight, Logan White and Eric Edman. Our executive producer for all of our, show, our schools and other sports and events is Paul Schulze. Please support our, stu- our advertisers who help make Worthy Road Studio TV show, Ball Game Blitz broadcast, the high quality that they are. Without these advertisements, there would be no crews to bring you these broadcasts. Our advertisers are... The replay sponsor, Carlock Nissan. Sponsoring your pregame show, which is where we're at right now. Here it's Brooksy's Barn, the Brooksy's Barn pregame show. The corner logo sponsors are Mitchell's Body Shop, Jones Chevrolet, Blacksmith Restaurant. Our scoreboard sponsor is Thompson & Smith Insurance. The touchdown sponsor, Garrett Plumbing & Heating. First down sponsor, also Thompson & Smith Insurance. Other advertisers are Aloha Pools, Southeastern Termite & Pest Control, yep. Elite Dental, McCoy's Heating and Air, Alive Hydration and Spa, Lifeline Blood Service, Kaufman's Home Furnishings and Appliances, Arrington Funeral Directors, Bank of Jackson, King Jewelers, Nest Realty, and Lifestyle Vision. Well, guys, it's week number four for the Bruins, and we are home once again. This is the third home game in the first four games of the season, and tonight, by far the biggest test. For the USJ Bruins, your Bruins come into this into this contest tonight at two and one, one and zero in the region with a very successful opening win region last week, sixty two to nothing over Tipton Rosemark. As I bring my color commentator Chuck Walker in, it occurs to me it's great to be one and zero in region play. This game, in the grand scheme of things, tonight doesn't really matter. It's not it's not a region game. It's not going to uh, thwart you from any type of goal that you have down the season. But this will be definitely the best team that you has. You USJ has faced all season. You know, one of the things, Bass, tonight, when you play a game like this, you bring all your big guns out. A special wrinkle that we've added here in Ball Game Blitz is we actually have a sideline announcer tonight. I was just we, about to say too, that. are bringing our big guns out. We've got George Tennyson from Alive IV Hydration and Spa fame. He's going to be down on the sidelines tonight because you know what? This is a big one. It's not a region game, but this game right here, this may be the very best team that USJ sees this year during their regular season. And what do they always say? Iron sharpens iron. You don't run from these games. You welcome it. You welcome the challenge. And this is a great Hardin County team as they've been for the past few years. This Hardin County team is as legit as it gets. But this USJ Bruin team, they back away from no man or animal. They're ready for this yeah. challenge. You know, when we start talking about the top five, by the way, uh, George Tennyson, our, our new our silent reporter, that was him right behind us. Yeah, it was. I set it up. God, look right. how there big he is. My There's the big head guy. Is. That's I'm slide back. <laughs> it's not really that big. It's is just it? a ca- No, the camera adds 10 feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is, that is like a. What, what's a cubic foot? How's that translate on a camera? It, it, it really does. But, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about this. First of all, there's when you have the conversation of who are the top five teams in West Tennessee, we're already doing that. And, and by this time, you have a pretty decent idea of uh, is he live load ready? Yeah, he's Perfect. live ready. Okay, he's going So this is for both of you guys yep. then. You know, you have an idea for the most part of who teams are at, at this point. There's still a lot of things they have to figure out, but you know if this team has a, an opportunity to go somewhere or not. And I think that anybody who fills out a top five list in West Tennessee is going to have Hardin County in there somewhere. For me, I have them in the top three. Now, understand that I count I count Henry County as part of West Tennessee. I have Matthew Smith's Tigers in the top three. I, I cannot imagine more than two teams. And, and those two, for me, would be, and in no particular order, though I think if I were putting them in order, it would be Haywood and Henry. Haywood, Henry, and Hardin, the three H's. 
H County. Three the of them. Yeah, all three the of them. Yeah. Uh, for my money, I think they're the top programs okay. in West Tennessee. And Coach Smith's been here, I, I think this is his 15th year, uh, I believe, what he's been around for a while. And he has really built an outstanding program. Now, they got a youngster, and names should sound familiar. Smith is quarterback Carter Smith. Most Six, common three, name in America. 185 pounds, and he is a heck of a player. And he's the catalyst for this football team. But it's not just that. You know, one thing, and here's where the Bruins will have to stand tall tonight in the trenches. Let me give you uh, some of this, some of the high, some of the weights that I saw as we were putting this roster together. Three players over 300 pounds, three players 290, and a total of 10 players 275 pounds or more. Uh, they grow them big down in you, Hardin County, my you friends. You know what those numbers remind me of, and I know they were a single-A team. Now, maybe not 10 deep, but at least five deep on both sides of the line were that Union City. Remember, there were three guys from Union City, on the, or two guys on the starting line, 300 plus, and then two other guys uh, on the line 280 plus. Yeah, so when it, you see these dudes in the trench, you're going to say Union. <laughs> yeah, With all respect to the to the Tornadoes, they look fantastic. Different. They're just bigger. They're better. Yeah. This is a top 10 for his team in the entire state. Now, a couple things here for you. First of all, Bryce Mott did a marvelous job uh, in, in the pregame show. And after this bad boy is over with, Bryce is going to do a marvelous job on the postgame show yeah. as well that will take you all the way up till 10 o'clock. Now, usually it's we've been getting out off here about 9.15, 9.30. So join him after the show, if you will. Call in the game. Talk about the score and the, and the game that you saw where you were at. You can be our eyes and ears in the places that we can't be. And there's not a lot of places that we can't be. We, cover more te- we carry more teams than anybody else. Yeah. Uh, by, by, a long, by a long way, uh, and tonight is no different, including a game just down the street uh, that could be a really good football game, uh, and that's Evangelical Christian coming to town to take on Jackson Christian. The feathers will be flying. It's a battle of the Eagles. That should be a fantastic game. Now, hey, Jackson Christian Tech was still undefeated because they had a no contest last week. They what was went that up, score when it was called? Uh, you know? it was, I think it was like 10 to 7, something. Like it was, it was, it was I, I think Jackson Christian was trailing uh, it, it's somewhere in that neighborhood. They never got to finish that game out, but they'll get to finish tonight. Coach Joe and Brother Dave on the call for that one as ECS comes to town to take on your Jackson Christian Eagles. You can listen to that game on 93.1. We're going to take this quick break and remind everybody we have a sideline report of George Tennyson tonight, uh, but we're going to take this quick break. The post-game show, or excuse me, the pre-game show, that would be the Brooksy's Barn pre-game show rolling right along. Kickoff is in just under 22 minutes. We'll back right after this on Worthy Road Studios. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state of the art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. Football is here. Get touchdown savings at McCoy's Heating and Air. Cooler weather is coming. Tackle the season ahead with McCoy's and be comfortable this season. To get your furnace ready, we are now offering one-time cleaning for only $90. Score big. Call McCoy's and schedule your $90 cleaning today. Call 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. Shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Brooksy's Barn, locally owned and operated for 40 years in Jackson. 
huge southern buffet at its finest or choose our drive through window service. Look over our beautiful lake and enjoy a great meal. Come on by. We are sure you will enjoy our friendly staff and great selection of food that we have from pork, fish, beef, chicken, not to mention lots of veggies. We also have a fantastic salad bar and a selection of scrumptious desserts. Y'all come. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Nissan and Carlock Prestige, the name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Welcome back to Kirkland Field, high atop the field here in the press box at mid midfield as the Brooksy's Barn pregame show rolls right along. We're just under 20 minutes away from kickoff. The Bruins come into this one two and one on the season. Had a big win to start the season off 47 to nothing over Liberty. Fall in week number two to Union City, 19 to six against a very good and still undefeated Union City football team. And then last week, holy cowboy. USJ got all over Tipton Rosemark early and often won that game 62 to nothing. So, George, and by the way, I want to everybody to our good friend George Tennyson. You can find him at a live hydration drip spa. Thank you. And you can also find him on the sidelines. He is our sideline reporter for the rest of the season, and he also hosts the Coaches Show yeah, looking forward as to well. That there. airs is a, is that a Wednesday air? Wednesday. Wednesday. Brooksy's Barn. We go on about 6.30 live with uh, Michael Strapp. With Coach Michael Strapp. So, Strapp. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. And so it's a pleasure to have you here. But going into this game, the Bruins uh, are averaging giving up under seven points a game on, on the season. They'll need their best defensive effort to, hook, to approach anything close to that right. tonight. Be a big test tonight for the guys. I know they're they're very very prepared. They're ready. Uh, coming into Kirkland Field, it's never an easy task for anybody. Even as good a program as Hardin County's got, I think uh, you know they're going to be fired up. They're going to be ready to play. It's turned into a beautiful evening. Had a little bit of a rain shower. Got to feel good and wet. But you're right. I think defense has to really click, get to the quarterback quick. If not, he's going to, unfortunately, may pick them apart. Well, it, it should be a fantastic game. Now, these two teams are familiar with each other. They played each other last year. That game took place in Savannah. That game took place in Savannah. I, I didn't call that game, but if I remember correctly, I think that score was... 21 to 7, wow. uh, 21 to 7, uh, which I, I thought was a yeoman's effort to right. even hang yeah. that close with a team like this, a ranked yeah. team uh, in, in 4A and, and one of the better ones in the entire Very, yep. classification. Now, let's talk. And have you had a chance to see the Bruins play? This? I have. I'm uh, online watching you, watching you and Chuck go at it. And, and again, I think Utes on their side, uh, on their side. They're very, very, very quick. Um, pardon me, in and out here. Uh, good football team. Well coached football team. So. Let's talk about a couple of the players that, that you have seen since, you, since you've since seen these games uh, that are going to need to have big nights. I, look, nobody has had a bigger start to the season than junior wide receiver Jace Barksdale. He's not just – he's also a defensive back and return specialist. Right. I mean, he has literally conceivably scored every single way that you can, basically, with a football in your hands. He's just a junior, but I don't think there's any question about it. They want to get the hands – the ball in the hands of number eight – all night long he, they're going to have a chance he's to win a playmaker he's a playmaker on every side of the football he's an intelligent football player plays very smart to be just a junior it's it's as though he's been playing a, a whole lot longer than that and they will find a way they're going to have to find a way to get the ball in his hand yeah davis sane the six five wide receiver first year here in the program uh he's done well four touchdowns on the season uh met great great catch radius but what really showed out to me last week and that's when that's when i get ready to reward somebody with an, some more opportunities was watching the way that he uh he not not just him i i thought a couple of different guys i thought Hayes Carney did a great job. The receivers blocking downfield, downfield yeah. was absolutely amazing. And you could tell that's something that is coached Coach. all the time uh, because every one of them did it mm -hmm. across the board. 
over and over regardless yeah. of the game situation. And I thought that was huge. Now, yeah. a couple of other things we need to see uh, from this offense tonight. Uh, Kevin Finch, the senior running back, you know, two weeks ago had an outstanding – or last week, actually, had an outstanding game, found the end zone multiple times, breaking tackles, mm. hard, hard runner. They will need him tonight to run the football effectively as well mm. because this can't be a one-trick pony. They have to be able to throw it. They've got to be able to run it, and they have to keep this Hardin County defense – on their toes tonight, it won't be easy, but I think they have a quarterback in Berkeley Pettigrew who is a smart quarterback, a capable quarterback. He can hit you on all levels. Uh, you know, he's working on that intermediate. Uh, that, and the intermediate can be the toughest. Yeah. I mean, you think, well, that's, that's a lot easier than downfield. And in a lot of ways, no, it's not. Right, you know, right. And, boy, he's really mastering that and having a good season. The offense is putting up big points here. Uh, so how do you see, before you go down, because you've got about 10, 12 minutes for this game kicks off, how do you see this one shaking out tonight, yeah, Well, you're, you're spot on. Uh, I had, Like you said, I had the opportunity of talking to Coach on Wednesday night, and I, and I pulled those same exact things out that you said, that when the wide receivers are blocking downfield, when you got an explosive running back, um, that, whose wheels just keep churning and churning and never stopping, even after the, uh, you know, maybe took him down for a loss, ends up picking up a big gain. And the quarterback himself, uh, the audibles and changing plays at the line. So um, I think that USJ is going to be ready. Uh, hopefully the outcome won't be uh, what you know a lot of us are thinking it will be, but I think they're going to show up and play a very excited football game tonight. George is going to get a word with Coach Strap during, uh, during for sure during halftime on the way to halftime, and as this game wraps up as well. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. Uh, welcome to the team. That's Thank for you, you so right much. there. I'm honored to be Thank here. Thank you be a so part much. Of this. And George is going to join us uh, the rest of the way as Chuck Walker checks back in. Uh, my man, Chuck Walker. Got his gold chain on, his gold brace. You got more bling than any color commentator you, I've ever seen. You're looking good, son. It was part of my contract when I took the job. We went to the jewelry. Well, I say jewelry. We went to the pawn shop immediately. And I said, you know what? No pawn shop. Only King Jewelers for Chuck Walker. So then we went to Grover, and I got blinged out. You should see my belly button ring. It's amazing. Well, there's a camera right there. Why don't you show everybody? Uh, you... you uh, it's a paid site. It's a paid site. I'm sorry. This is a free broadcast. Let's talk a little bit more about another game that you can All find. Right. And don't forget, you can not only watch these, uh, these games on the school's Facebook page uh, in the Ball Game Blitz as well, but at WNWS.com as well on WNWS TV. Uh, you can find this game. You can find the Jackson Christian game, which, by the way, will be on the radio on 93.1 uh, with Coach Joe and Brother Dave on the call for that one. And Dave and Stan are on the road tonight in the place we were in two weeks ago as Trinity Christian got their first win of the season last week. Big win. Got them, got them a region win. Mm -hmm. They get to one and two on the season. Had a huge ground game. One of their underclassmen was actually named our player of the week. You can check that out at WNWS.com. But they got their first win. But tonight, Chuck, on 105.3, you can hear that game. Of course, you can watch it as well. But they go on the road, and they take on Union City. And you and I have seen firsthand what that's all about is there any reason to believe that Trinity Christian, who got that running game going last week, and there's something to be said of getting that first win, but this would be by far a major upset, I think, at this point, just based on the way that Union City's played in the first three weeks? Yeah, I don't know that you could call it anything, but and let me pick your brain for, for a minute, uh, being the collegiate football player that, oh. that, you, that you were. All right, so you hear words like equalizer thrown around a lot of times during the during the year, and you hear, "Oh, well, size is the great equalizer." Speed. Union City was very, very a good team, but what impressed me most with them, Bass, was their size. So, what's the what's the greater equalizer? Is it speed or is it size? Boy, if that were just an yeah, a, a so one just size one answer, word, one, word, one word answer, uh, I'll hang up and just listen. Just though, if that if there were a one size fits all, that that would be yeah, you know. And look, for me, it's me. And and the reason that I say that, look, on the high school level, you can be intimidated just by people getting off the bus, right? You know, on the collegiate level, you're not going to be impressed because the, the other team's big. They're all big. Right. <laughs> they're, they're all big. So that's something that everybody's used to. But the hardest thing to adapt to, and really, and I could almost basically tell you at almost any position, even in the trenches, is truly the speed of the game. 
the speed of the game, you know. Speed of the hand, speed of the every, feet. Every, what speed are we of talking everything. About? Just, just everything. Just, just getting just in the right spot. playing the game. Because by the time you're in high school and you've started for a couple of years, you're a junior or a senior, you know, it's just all about execution at that point. It's, you know, you've done it so much, you're used to that level. But when you first get to a collegiate uh, program, uh, and, and I'll, I will finish this in just a minute, but they're going to do the national anthem. So we'll take this break from the press box here at Kirkland Field and be back after this on Worthy Road Studio. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. If you work outside or in a facility with no AC, or you're just struggling with this year's heat wave, it can really take a toll on your body and health. At Live Hydration Drip Spa, we can help you recover with our Beat the Heat special for only $59. Call or visit us online today to set your appointment. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Home furnishings, appliances, bedding, and so much more. Kaufman's. At the Bypass and Oil Well Road in Jackson. Home furnishings for every room in your home. Custom upholstery options too with professional advice. Major appliances from America's top name brands. Mattresses and bedding accessories. Outdoor living and grilling too. And our fully stocked warehouse helps prevent supply chain delays. Kaufman's for your life. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. At Nest Realty Jackson, connections and relationships are at the heart of everything we do. We wake up every day with the goal of helping our agents build trust, relationships, and community. Let's connect. We realize you have a busy lifestyle, and at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Welcome back to Kirkland Field here on the pregame show, the Brooksy's Barn pregame show. Seabass Chuck Walker, George Tennyson, and all the great folks here at Worthy Road Studios as your captains, by the way, for USJ are out and getting ready to meet at midfield with the captains from Hardin County, but they're not out here yet, so when they do, we'll get you those numbers. Now, captains for your Bruins, that much we can definitely do, Chiquita. First of all, from left to right, your quarterback for the Bruins, the senior leader, Berkeley. Pettigrew doing his thing has had an outstanding season so far. One of your four captains for the Bruins. Also a captain there in the trenches as well. Senior Mark Cox on that offensive line. Kevin Finch is your third captain. He'll be your starting running back tonight for the Bruins. And Parker Barnes, the senior. And I can't even believe I'm saying that because I've been calling Parker's games for about four years up until last year. So uh, I remember when he came in as a freshman and made an immediate impact. And here he is, a senior and one of the captains for your USJ Bruins here in week number four. Now, I want to go back to what you asked me. You asked me about what the advantage was, if it was going to be. And, and we're, we're going to get to that, but right now we're coming down to a coach's interview uh, George, with Coach Strapp okay, and yeah. George Tennyson. Here we go.
Coach um, George Tennyson here on sideline with head football coach USJ Bruins. How you feeling, Coach? Uh, anxiety levels are out the roof right now. Yeah, passion's a good thing. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, you know, kids are ready. Hopefully, they're you know they're ready to go. Got a good Hardin County team over here, uh, so it should be a fun game. Oh, we're excited for you. I know you're busy. Got a lot going on. All right, play hard, Coach. We'll see you at halftime. All right. Thank you, guys. Back up to you. Well, you know, I'll tell you one thing. I, I don't know if it's just coincidence, but did you notice how much more tan Coach and George were than you and I? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is I, it the cameras or the lighting or what, man? It, They're well, golden. They say the press box adds 15 pounds and evidently a zitter to your face. <laughs> <laughs> as they did that, as they yeah, that's around. what's going on. I here. have a big, big birthday party <laughs> this weekend. I'm very upset about this pimple. You have a big birthday party. Well, well, yeah, happy birthday, man. I didn't realize. It's, no, it's, <laughs> it's for this guy, man. You'd really like him. You know, I, by the way, to my everlasting shame, you know, I have no idea when your birthday is. It's okay. No big deal. It's you not that big of a deal. I'm a grown-up. I don't celebrate that hard. <laughs> I only celebrate so, the 50. I know. That's all. I know. Hardin County has made their way to the field. What in the world is all that going on? All right. So, Hardin County has made their way to the field. We'll see their captains here in just a few minutes, and we'll be getting ready for the coin toss. We are literally minutes away from this week four showdown. Uh, but I'll finish your question real quick. To me, it's speed. I, I think the adaption of speed and learning to just play that game at that level with that speed. Uh, and there's literally nothing you can do about speed. Because you I, get if rid I have of a, a guy that's quick. bigger than me, yeah. I, can, I, can, I, I can work my way around that. I've right. played much bigger people. What but if you, you have, can't make up for somebody that's half what a second faster What if you have a unit you? bigger than you? Can you work your way around that? Say like it I did, a unit, a defensive line, or an offensive line. You know, you, and really the lines are where the, the size would I matter the most. I prefer to go against a bigger offensive line. They generally can't move nearly as well. We're going down to the field right here at midfield where the captains are meeting for this football game. Speaking of the captains for Hardin County, of course, Carter Smith, the junior quarterback, one of those captains. Uh, number three, we don't have a number three on there, so that won't be good. You know who he's going to be. Uh, this isn't good because there's seven and we're looking at their roster there's not a three or a seven on it so uh to our friends in savannah we apologize this is the roster we were given and, and caleb mcgee was the last captain that we do have confirmation of Ca caleb mcgee yep was was the last captain okay i'd love to get you these other guys uh but the roster we were given doesn't show a three or a seven now uh he did mention caleb mcgee and carter smith we do have that hardin county has de has won the cost and they have deferred so for the second straight week the Bruins will start this game off with the football. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm hoping uh, that the Bruins have, or I'm sorry, that the uh, Tigers have not watched a lot of game tape because this right here, Jay Sparksdale is going to have to play big and play early and really get off. And he can make the most damage on the special teams with his punt returns, his kick returns. I'm hoping he get, gets a chance tonight to work. He didn't get a lot of chances last week. Didn't need them. It was a big win for USJ against TRA. But tonight, Barksdale is going to need that ball in his hands on almost every single offensive possession that the Bruins have. Well, here come your USJ Bruins. There's nothing like Chuck. If you want a thrill in life, run through the banner with your teammates. Uh, there imagine, there right? is nothing like that. Smoke is in the air. It's a cloudy Friday night. There's been spotty rain off and on. You can see little patches off and on out in the distance there of rain. So rain could be a factor here off and on in this football game. I guess the question is, does that affect one of these two teams more than the other? And I'm not sure that it really does because this field is in immaculate con condition. This is one of the, the premier fields in all of West Tennessee, so I would think that if you're going to play, and it, it, I mean, we had a, it rained for three minutes hard, and that was it. So I don't, I don't even know how much the field is affected, but I know that this field is going to be affected a lot less than other fields around. So I, I, I don't expect this, the conditions, so to speak, to be a problem for either team, as it were. Nolan Foster will do the kicking for the Tigers back deep for your Bruins number eight, Jace Barksdale, and see if we can get that other one. For me if you don't mind look i thought i saw a nine now if that's a nine that would be drew english um yeah yeah that's <laughs> you don't see me to be kickers returning kicks <laughs> no no yeah, yeah. We, we definitely know for sure that jay sparksdale's back there so here's the kickoff it's a high kick taken around the 25 yard line by barksdale makes a man miss tries to get to the right sideline can't do it met around the right hash by a host 
of Hardin County Tigers, and that's where the Bruins will set up shop with their first drive of the evening, first and 10 from their own 34-yard line. You know, it was the English back there. You'll know, Bass, on this replay here, as they're bringing the ball back out, Barksdale tries to break to the right. English actually runs into one of his own uh, his own players there, opens up a lane for Hardin County to, to make the tackle, but still, USJ starting the ball on their own. 35. All right, so here we go, USJ. And by the way, big news, Raleigh Seals back this week. That's huge for this Bruins offense. It's the Bruins football team, period. They, they didn't need them last week, but they'd certainly need them in a game like tonight. By the way, Pat uh, cracking the starting lineup, Mills Terry tonight at wide receiver, split out to the left. Yeah, Mills Terry, a really big, tall sophomore, son of Randy and Lisa Terry, uh, really looks good out there running. It gives you a t high target. Quit touching me. To the left, splits out Terry. He's your single. And in the slot, you have Barksdale. That's Finch flanking Pettigrew to his left. Here's the snap. Give to Finch around right tackle. He'll get back to about the line of scrimmage and no more gang tackled by the Hardin County defense. Yeah, really good pursuit there by number two. Do you have a two? We have the same lineup, don't we? Yes. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, good, really good have, pursuit by uh, number two for the number Tigers. eight, Keandre Smith. Yeah, he, he was in on it as, for, as for well. The Tigers. Nice so tackle. no gain, second and ten for the Bruins on the initial drive of this football game. Three wide receiver sets. Twins to the wide side. The wide is your left single wide receiver. That same. Now here's option to the left. Here's a sprint pass out to the wide side in the flat. Barksdale swarmed under. Gets lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage that time. Kevin Tarver for the Tigers leading the tackle. Boy, you can see the speed side to side for this Tiger defense. Yeah, really quick. Really good pursuit. That was sniffed out immediately. Really good uh, uh, discipline there by the Tigers to not buy the fake in the beginning and, and to roll out left with back. All right, after two plays, third and ten, no gain on the first two, so third and ten for the Bruins. They'll need just right, almost exactly their 45 for the first. Here's Pettigrew with the snap, drops back, looking out into the flat, not much doing. If he had caught the football, he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that was Tarver once again in excellent coverage for the Tigers. Your Bruins go three and out. Yeah, uh, Tarver was right over him. Uh, knew to stick his hand right in front of the ball, but even if he would have caught it, you're not getting too many yards with that completely there. A quick third and out for the for the Tigers. That'll be three and out for your Bruins. Back deep for the Tigers. Braden Wilkes at his own 27-yard line. English back to punt for the Bruins. Bruins may get a free five here. Not going to make a difference on whether or not they punt the football, but they drew one of the Tigers across the line and made a little bit of a contact. So instead of fourth and ten, it's going to be fourth and five from their 40-yard line, but the Bruins still in a situation where they're going to have to punt this football. Yeah, that was Keandre Smith. A little over-aggressive that time, but still sets up a punt. Now do it again, and we have a different conversation. English parked at his own 26-yard line. The snap is a good one. Plenty of time. Gets it off a high wobbler that'll hit around the 33-yard line. Take a roll. Hardin County is going to stay away from it, and that ball will come to rest around the 27-yard line. That's a 33-yard a punt for the Bruins. Nice job. It's almost, I used to say almost flipping the field there for the Bruins, so you'll take that from English each and every time. Yeah, really nice high punt. Hardin County had to get out of the way and stay out of the way of that. And English, like I said, 45 yards, 43 yards in high school, you'll take that more often than not, especially from your freshman punter slash kicker. You'll see a lot of the same formations for Hardin County here. Three wide receiver set twins to the left. That is Tylen Irvin flanking Carter Smith to his left. Here's again to Irvin off of right tackle. Falls ahead for about a three-yard gain before he's pushed back by a host of Bruin defenders. Yeah, you saw a lot of guys you know, win. You, you saw all kinds of Bruins in there on the tackle. I missed a couple of numbers there as it was to our away side. But, yeah, only a four-yard gain there. Well, Noah Spencer was definitely one of the people leading that charge that time. Great play by Noah. What a sure tackler he has been so far this season. Setting up second and seven for the Tigers from their own, we'll call it the 31-yard line. Junior quarterback, fantastic win at that Carter Smith from the gun Irvin to his right 
Three wide receiver set. Here's a give to Irvin off of left tackle. Makes a man miss. Spins around. Falls forward to about the 35-yard line. That'll leave him just a little more than three yards short. We'll call it third and a long three for the Tigers from their own 35. Yeah, Alex Wallace is in there making initial contact, but good job on keeping your legs moving there, picking up another yard or two after first contact. All right, this time Smith in the backfield from the gun by himself. Twins to the left. It's a five wide receiver set. Trips to the right. Third and three. Slap. Uh, here's the snap. Straight go on the left sideline. Nearly brought in one handed. That ball was not really catchable, but that's not going to matter. There's some mustard on the field, and that was a clear one. That's going to be pass interference on the Bruins. Intended on that target that time, Braden Wilkes. And instead of fourth down, looks like it's going to be first down for the Tigers. Yeah, Will Horton had really good coverage there. I didn't think that ball was catchable either. It was definitely underthrown, which makes the receiver come back into Horton uh, at that point. But nonetheless, doesn't matter. That's going to yeah, be a I don't first believe down. That that's a thing in high school football anyway as far as catchable you know yeah very yeah, so. well may not be but the, it, the interference comes back for going to back to get the ball that's right so midfield for the tigers this drive stays alive twins to the right Irvin flanking smith in the backfield to his left here's the snap give to Irvin up the middle he's stuffed he may get back to the line of scrimmage met by a host of Bruin defenders and led by a young man who has really had a great start to the season Kanye Sawyer he also acts as the left tackle for this USA offense and he has played really big so far in the first quarter of this season yeah Kanye Sawyer did not give up his gap there really collapsed it down no gain for the Tigers and that's what you're going to need if you can win this game up front and hold them to gains like that and force them to air it out I like this USJ secondary 834 left to go here in the first quarter run and the clock is is running. Second and 10 for the Tigers. He's your man in motion. Smith rolling, trying to set up a screen that is completely sniffed out that time. What a job by, looks like, is that Parker Barnes? Yeah, Parker Barnes coming in there completely. Had this sniffed out from the very beginning. This ball is passed just a little bit behind the line of scrimmage. As soon as he catches it, as the back catches it, Parker Barnes has him wrapped up and down. Short loss for the Tigers. You're looking at third and 11 now. And that was a great individual tackle because I didn't see uh, we see get the relay, there a lot of Bruins in the area other than Barnes, but he solo makes that tackle for a loss of one. Third and 11 for the Tigers from their own 49-yard line. Four wide receiver set, twins to each side. Here's the snap to Smith, looking under pressure, taken down. He's tripped up by number 57 on the defense. That's Braylon Roberts with the tackle. Carter Smith tried to step up in the pocket like a good quarterback does and uh, getting a piece of that ankle and bringing him down for the sack. Yeah, Braden Roberts came in that time. No one touched him. He was there. Car uh, uh, Smith did step up. By the time he stepped up, he'd already lost his footing uh, anticipating a tackle, and he was sacked. What great job that time by the USJ Bruins on Hardin County's first possession. Here's the snap. The punt is a wobbler that is taken fair caught at the 30-yard line by Barksdale, and that's where the Bruins will get their second possession of the evening. So not much for either offense so far. Both defenses look fantastic in those first two drives. Yeah, this is the game we expected to see. you got two really good teams here, two really good defenses, two teams that know one another. You're not going to confuse these teams off of anything that you've done in the past. So both these teams, both these coaching staffs are very well prepared coming into this game. So this is what I expected to see. So Pettigrew and the Bruin offense set to go here on their second drive. Twins to the right side, two wide receivers set. Here's to give the Finch off left tackle. Falls forward, keeps his feet moving. Should have went down at the line of scrimmage. Had that forward lean and will actually pick up five of it. I thought he was going down for no gain. And Finch keeps those feet driving just like he did last week and picks up five, second and five for the Bruins. From their 35-yard line with 640 left to go in the first quarter. You know, Finch does a really good job of getting his body low and it looks like he's down and he keeps turning. Reminds you of a Maurice Jones Drew type back that's really small and when he gets low he's hard to bring down and just as powerful as he can be MJD baby 3-4 formation for the Tigers. Here's the snap. Pettigrew swings it out to the wide side. Complete to the 35-40. Makes a man miss. Has the first down. Still going all the way up to midfield. Now we have a flag in the backfield. It's going to be a hold against the Bruins as the preliminary call. This play's coming back, unfortunately. Yeah, and that play was set up. I didn't see the hole, but I saw Mark Cox out there blocking 
all the way down on that pass, eight, nine yards down the field. Really nice job by number 62, Mark Cox. I hate to see this one coming back. Let's see if we can pick it up on the replay. I did not see it initially, uh, but that flag was thrown pretty pretty closely right after the reception. And it wasn't like he was already downfield. That, that, that flag came out pretty much immediately, so that wipes out the first first down of the game for the Bruins. But you love to see that, though. I mean, that's, that's a wrinkle. We haven't seen a whole lot of that, so that gives some county, something for this Hardin County defense to think about. That'll be second and what do we call that now? 15, yeah, second and 15 for the Bruins. Here is the handoff off right tackle to the short side. Swarmed under, not much doing that time. Matter of fact, he may get back to the line of scrimmage. That'll set up third and a long, we'll call it 15, closer to 16. They'll need the 40-yard line to pick up the first. Yeah, give that credit to number 18, Sam Tanner there. Really nice job of tackling. Had him wrapped up. Had some help to clean it up, but that's that it will be probably a yard and a half loss there for the Bruins. We, I didn't see a flag, but apparently we have one. Uh, this has been hidden by one of the sideline players, but uh, we have a personal foul. Did not see what it was, but a personal foul against the Tigers. So they will walk this bad boy off. And after they, it finally comes to set, it will be placed at the, what are they going to call it, the 39. So it's not a first down. It's a yard short. But that looks like a much better and much more convertible down in distance this time. They say it's, they, the sticks say still second down. So we'll call it second. Now they flip it over. It's third and a long one yard for the Bruins hoping to pick up that first down halfway through the first quarter here at Kirkland Field. Yeah, two really good defensive teams. You don't want to get behind the sticks at all. So third and one is so much better than second and 15. All right, still three wide receiver set. Pettigrew from the gun gives to Finch straight up the middle. He's hit at the line of scrimmage, keeps those feet moving and falls forward. He's taken down. Great form tackle by Sam Tanner, but it looks like it's going to be enough for a Thompson and Smith first down. Yeah, and give credit there. Rory Jones was going at it. Got dumped down the field, but if not for Roy Jones' effort there to open up that lane for Finch, I don't know that he gets a first down. Then it becomes decision times for the Bruin. Really good job by Rory Jones opening up that hole. And both of these teams have converted on a first down after a penalty uh, that cost it might have ended a drive uh, so the Bruins will take advantage of that hopefully it's first and 10 from their own 41 yard line here's play action going out to the right fat left fat completed to Barksdale gets a block down the sideline into Tiger territory and finally taken out of bounds around the 47 yard line more than enough for a Thompson and Smith first down yeah and on that block leading that way opening up that hole for Barksdale was sophomore number 12 Mills Terry that may be how he got into the starting lineup this week. Really nice block opening up that lane for Barksdale. And you know what we say all the time, all my man needs is a chance. And, my, and the Bruins, as good as their receivers have been as pass catchers this year, the thing I've seen about them that I like by far the most is their ability to block. Amen. All right, same formation, four wide set. Here is Pettigrew from the gun, Finch to his right, play action once again. Same play at the other side. This time the Bruins can't haul it in, pass a little low. Bark still not able to bring it in, second and ten from the Tiger, 47-yard line. Pass just a little low there, but I love the same idea because then on the other side to the right side, who do you have out there? Number 17, Davis Sane doing the same thing. He's had a lot of nice blocks this year, and you're exactly right. That right there could could be the opening that the Bruins need to expose. Now let's see if they take advantage of that height uh, advantage that Saint has. He is 6'5", and he's going to be a, a height advantage no matter who he plays. He's in the right slot. This time, Pettigrew from the gun gives to Finch, makes a man miss, kicks it out, stutter steps, falls forward, doing his best Barry Sanders impression, took nothing and turned it into three yards down to about the 44-yard line, setting up third and seven for the Bruins from the Hardin County, four, we'll call it the 44. It'll still be third and seven with 4.45 left to go in the, in the first quarter. You know what I'll tell my 11-year-old baseball team all the time? I don't. It's really hard to beat a team that don't quit. Fitch does not stop his feet moving ever. It's really hard to bring a man down that doesn't quit running. That opportunity that he had when Steel Haynes was out last year to step up has really helped him out this year. So third down, here we go, play action. Pettigrew looking for his man. This has to be pass interference. Holy cow. You have two I, officials in I, the in the area, and that was intended for Pettigrew. We'll go back to the replay. Don't take our word for it. This is unbelievable. That contact was it, well before the football got there. Yeah. Pass a little high, went up to try to get it, and he was hit by the defender. 
a quarter it, second before that ball even got there. I'm stunned, and there it, were two officials right in place, and that USA sideline was not happy about that at all, and they shouldn't have been. Barksdale was moved off the spot for sure long before the ball got there. That was a bit of big first down for the Bruins. So that's it. now it brings up fourth down for the Bruins at the Hardin County 44. Hardin County nearly jumped again. Here's the punt. It's high, wobbly, and going to head out of bounds. Let's see where they spot this. Should be around the 15, and it will be at the 14. So there you go. The Tigers will take uh, uh, possession of the football, their second drive of the game from their own 14-yard line. Not a bad job by the Bruins that time. I, I, I think they should have had a call come in there. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. You don't want, you don't want to harp on it. I mean, you, you, oh, can go back and, you can go back and watch the game. You can see what happened. I mean, he, he was there super early. Regardless, great another great punt by freshman Drew English to put him at the 14-yard line of the Tigers. So the second drive of the night for the Tigers. Smith from the gun. Irvin to his right. Here's Irvin off left tackle, bounces it back inside, tripped up, falls forward. He'll pick up about seven, kept his balance far enough, kept that forward lean like Finch did as well, and they'll give him more than seven. They'll say he picked up eight, almost nine, and we'll call it second and one for the Tigers. Yeah, he did a nice job falling forward there after the initial contact. You had guys like Brooke Jones uh, in, in on that first hit there. Tigers a little more up tempo this time. Here's the give, bounced out, makes a man miss, still on his feet, rumbling all the way up to the 32-yard line. Outstanding carry that time by number 11, Tylen Irvin. Yeah, Brooks Jones in on the tackle there for the Bruins, but it wasn't after. Uh, it was after the, the first down gain for the Tigers, and this up-tempo here seems to be working in their favor on this drive. That's the first first down not penalty-induced for the Hardin County Tigers on the evening with 3.35 left to go here in the first quarter. Twins to the right. Your right is your wide side. Irvin to the left of his quarterback, Smith. Here's a hitch into the right side. Flat makes a man miss. Completed and up to about the 40-yard line. It's number nine. I'm sorry, guys. Don't have a nine. We work with the roster they gave us, and we don't have a nine. So for our Hardin County friends watching, uh, I would love to tell you who, what, what his name is. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but here's what I do know. It was an eight-yard gain. Tigers at their own 40, going to set up second and two. Yeah, nice little shift move there after the reception. Uh, USJ player safety had, had a shot at him in the back, uh, just kind of shot loose from that, was able to get eight yards out of it. Carter Smith from the gun, takes it, hands it off to Irvin on the right side, makes a man miss, makes another man miss, finally rustled out of bounds, but not before he picks up a first down. Yeah, that was uh, sophomore Alex Wallace staying with the pursuit there. But again, kind of grinded them, kind of increased the tempo here a little bit on this drive, and, and we're looking at two and three down drives resulting in first down for the Tigers. They'll spot it at their own 44-yard line, just under three minutes left to go here in the first quarter. Very evenly played first quarter, trading a couple of punches here. Back and forth are these two very good football teams. Of course, Harden Hard County is everything you thought they were. They're exactly... What's, what you think there are? Bruins playing extremely well tonight. I don't think there's any question about that. Here's Smith from the gun. Snaps. Step back. Looking to his left. Under pressure. Breaks through that pressure. Now looks for his man around midfield. Incomplete. Throws a little bit behind the receiver. Excellent pressure initially on that play by USJ's defense for Smith to throw it before he wanted to. Yeah, let's talk about that coverage there by Will Horton, number one, uh, the, the defensive back on that one, getting in there, blocking the ball up. Really good pressure, uh, but, but Smith still had a chance to make that pass. Will Horton steps in, gets his arm out. That thing does not have a prayer. Yeah, USA has physical corners. Uh, there ain't no doubt about that. And some outstanding pass, uh, pass defenders in this in this secondary for the Bruins. So second and ten for the Tigers. Here's Irvin at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go now. Bounces it out to the right side. Finds a little bit of a seam. Makes something out of absolutely nothing. He'll pick up five yards all the way up to the 49-yard line of the Tigers, setting up third and five. That was initially perfectly defended. You see this? Nowhere to go. And he pops outside right there. Nobody contained. Barksdale finally brings him down. Yeah, Barksdale, really good pursuit there. But what about the patient running, finding, finding, oh, no finding, doubt. staying down, staying low? I mean, honestly, Irvin reminds me of Finch. Yeah, Great, yeah, you know, that's yeah. that's they. Same, same and really, the, these two teams remind me of each other right now. The only difference would be that, that Hardin County's bigger in the trenches, but they're a 4A school. They should be. 
Uh, by the way, USJ doesn't take a backseat size-wise to too many of their self. Third and five for the Tigers. Smith looking for a home run down the sidelines. Did he come back to that catch? Let's see if the, if the officials say he made that catch or not. They're going to say he did. Now, watch this. I'll get you to the number in just a second. I don't know if this was a back shoulder pass or not. Turn spin going down that right sideline. The wide receiver comes back and makes a beautiful adjustment on the ball. That's Braden Wilkes with from and a laser by Carter Smith, by the way. First down for the Tigers. They're on the move at the Bruin 27-yard line with a minute 40 left to go here in the first quarter. What a bullet. I couldn't see if he made that catch, but it looks like he did cleanly on the replay. Now on the slant, the ball thrown behind the intended receiver that time for the Tigers, second and 10 for Hardin County. Yeah, going back to the play before there's absolutely no defense you can do on, on that play on that pass to Wilkes the way that he came back for that ball yeah that was perfect coverage on the back end it just yeah Barksdale we, was in perfect position. We, yeah, when, you, right. when you come back a yard or two I mean you, you can't defend that really nice play by Smith there well you got that right 90 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Second and 10 for the Tigers from the Bruin. 27-yard line. Twins to each side. The wide side is your left. Here's a man in motion. That's Irvin looking to set something up. A screen up the middle completed at the 20-10-yard line. That's where he'll go down. Nice pickup. Boy, they just released Braden Wilkes right here. You'll see Wilkes. And he just releases right here. Looks like they're going to set something up and then releases. Bam! Nobody there. The middle's wide open. He accelerates all the way down to the 10-yard line. Even when that play happened, he, sta he stared Irvin down. Stared him down, stared him down, stared him down. Dumped it off to Wilkes at the last minute, wide open. Well, that's a beautifully drawn-up play by Hardin County for sure. I love that formation. Oh, I've seen that. All right, here we go. Irvin to the left of Smith. Irvin bouncing out outside to the tackle, driving his feet and into the end zone. Thought he was going to go down, but just like Finch, keeps his legs pumping into the end zone. And with one minute and one second left to go in the first quarter, Hardin County draws first blood. Yeah, nice run there. Keeping his feet moving. You called it early and you called it right when you said Finch reminds you a lot uh, of, of Irvin there. And really good run. Uh, that's going to be tough. USA is going to have yeah. to slow him down at first contact at least. Yeah, Noah Spencer had him initially. I, I thought he was going to bring him down, but he slipped right out of that tackle. The extra point is up, and it is good. That is Nolan Foster on the extra point. And your new score with a minute and one left to go here in the first quarter. Hardin County 7 and USJ nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. At Arrington Funeral Directors, we accept all prearranged funerals. So you may have prearranged your funeral in this town with another funeral home or even in another state. But we accept all prearranged funerals because we're here to serve families. And welcome back here to Kirkland Field. Bruins now trailing 7 to nothing. Here's the kickoff taken by Barksdale. Makes a couple of men miss and finally taken down about the 29-yard line. Well, the Bruins, with just under a minute to go here in the first quarter, will begin their third possession, only this time trailing 7 to nothing. Yeah, you know, Barksdale didn't, didn't catch that ball at the ground. It looked like it was going to the end, to the sideline over there, about the 25, and he thought it was going to bounce out. You get the ball around the 35-yard line on the legal kick, but that thing just sat down, so he picked it up. Was able to turn it in to a four-yard yeah, game. I know you were hoping that Hardin County hadn't done their 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 due diligence and 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 watched this team's film, but they clearly have. First and ten for the Bruins from their 28-yard line. Here's Pettigrew with the handoff to Finch straight up the middle. He'll fall forward to the 24. Nice gain on first down. We'll call it a pick up of five for the Bruins. Yeah, really good uh, job opening a hole up there in the middle. And again, falling forward for a yard or two. I got a feeling we're going to say that on every Finch carry from now on, the next year and seven games. Yeah, it occurs to me so far through 12 minutes of play, you're not going to beat Hardin County sideline to sideline. 
You're not going to do that. No. Yeah, they're disciplined. They're, they're fast. Uh, I, I like them in between the tackles. I like the Bruins in between the tackles. They're getting three, four, five yards. They, they've had some success, of success with that. And then the, the screen with the block. Pettigrew from the gun. Play action. On the slant. Complete at the 40. 45-50. It's a foot race. 45-40. 35-30. 25-20. And he tripped up. The turf monster got Jace Barksdale. Or he was going in for six. Now, it's still a gain of 47 yards, but that quick slant and Barksdale was off to the races. And you watch here on the replay, outruns four Tigers, and he looks back, and he's trying to go to the end zone, and he trips up on his own. They were never going to catch him. He goes down at the Hardin County 15-yard line on what will be the final play of this first quarter. And after 12 exciting minutes, your score... Hardin County 7 and USJ nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Nissan and Carlock Prestige, the name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Football is here. Get touchdown savings at McCoy's Heating and Air. Cooler weather is coming. Tackle the season ahead with McCoy's and be comfortable this season. To get your furnace ready, we are now offering one-time cleaning for only $90. Score big. Call McCoy's and schedule your $90 cleaning today. Call 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. So if you're just joining us after one quarter of play, Hardin County leading your USJ Bruins 7 to nothing. Your impressions of what you saw here in the first 12. Yeah, Chase Barksdale was right there. We were talking about it during the commercial break. You know what I think got him? He went 102%. That extra 2%, those legs were moving too fast, and, and he tripped up. But, again, huge gain for the Bruins. Yeah, that, great yeah, position, that wasn't anybody that caught him from behind no, and got a shoestring. He, no. he tripped up. Yeah, Barksdale's so much fun to watch. Play. I love watching this. This kid alone, a great team, a lot of great things to come out and watch. Yeah. This kid alone is worth the price of admission. Yeah, that's exactly the way I was going to phrase it. So, Bruins, first and ten inside the red zone at the Hardin County. Will that be the 15? Yeah, we'll call yep. it the 15-yard line. All right, here we go. Three wide receivers set. Here's Finch straight up the gut. Nice drive, nice push by the interior of that USJ offensive line. He'll get down to about the 11. We'll call it a gain of four. Yeah, Kanye Sauer is really imp impressing me tonight. He's opening up a hole, and then he's looking for another guy to block after he grounds somebody. Really nice job there by the interior line of the Bruins. I still say, what does this say about Union City, y'all? I, I'm just, I can't stop thinking about that. I mean, that wasn't a fluke. They're they, large, they were they're, they're larger. When I'm looking at the two teams, and we have different angles at the game, I think Union City's line is bigger than this Hardin County line. Now, maybe not weight-wise, but I'm t Bass, I was on the field next to them. They look like grown men that body build. From the gun, here's Pettigrew. Play action fake. Plenty of time rolling to his left, looking. They're going for the end zone, the back of the end zone. A beautiful, beautiful one-handed catch by Jace Barksdale in the end zone for a Garrett Plumbing heating and air touchdown from Berkeley Pettigrew. Yeah, give it up to Pettigrew. Give it up to Barksdale. Only one human being was catching this touch pass to the back of the end zone. And Jace Barksdale, oh. it tells you right now why he is worth the price of admission. That play was unbelievable. And you left some Somebody out that offensive line gave Pettigrew all the time in the world to complete that pass. I was getting to that. English for the extra point. The snap a little high. It's up and it is good. Splits the uprights and your new score. And we're going to have a roughing the kicker. I see it. We have a roughing the kicker. They'll be tacked on on the kickoff from this one. But your new score with 11:08 left to go here in the first half. USJ seven and Hardin County seven on Worthy Road Studios. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. Brooksy's Barn, locally owned and operated for 40 years in Jackson. 
huge southern buffet at its finest or choose our drive through window service look over our beautiful lake and enjoy a great meal come on by we are sure you will enjoy our friendly staff and great selection of food that we have from pork fish beef chicken not to mention lots of veggies we also have a fantastic salad bar and a selection of scrumptious desserts y'all come you're not in a beehive you're at kirkland field this place is buzzing it's electric one of the top ranked teams in the state in class 4a and your usj bruins knotted up at seven here with 11 minutes to go in the first half We've seen it all so far. What an answer by this Bruin offense. Yeah, it really was. And I told you starting this game off, this team fears no man, no animal, no anything like that, right? They're not going to just come in here and hand this game and wait for next week. Unbelievable response after a tough no call by the Bruins to knot this game up. I still can't believe that Jace Barksdale came up with that football. Jace, he, he's not wow. bad. He reminds me of myself if I were better. Wow, that's one of the greatest catches I've seen on the high school level. Here's English from his own from the 45-yard line after the personal foul rough and kicker on the extra point. Boots it into the end zone there. Uh, so great job by the Bruins special teams there as well. But, again, i got to go back. Everybody did their job, but that offensive line gave Berkeley Pettigrew five, six seconds and allowed that route to come open. So got to give a credit to that offensive line, too. Yeah, really great job, and they're opening <coughs> up holes in the middle against a team that they're outsized against. USJ is finding a win or, or finding a way to move the ball uh, ahead. Really, really nice job by both teams so far. It's been a fun game to watch. Well, let's see what the Tigers have for an answer from their own 20 twins to each side. A left receiver in the left slot as well. Here's Irvin in the backfield. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Keeps his feet moving he'll fall forward for about well after it's all said and done he'll end up picking up four yards up to the 24 yard line yeah really good run about Irvin there but I'm gonna tell you who came in and cleaned it up once he broke loose and came in hot was number two senior Parker Barnes came in there and said look you can keep your feet moving but you're coming down with me on this one he did and also Sam McMillan Sam McMillan in tonight and playing well but yeah Parker's already having a very good game plays with his hair on fire I always like seeing that he and Brooks Jones both. I love watching them play defense. Second and six for the Tigers. Smith from the gun takes the snap. Pump fake now looking to his right hash. Intercepted by the Bruins at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. Forget about it. Touchdown, Bruins. That's a Garrett Plumbing Hegan Air touchdown. It's a pick six for number 24, Brooks Jones. You say his name, playing with hair on fire. All of a sudden, Brooks Jones in coverage from an outside linebacker position. Pick six. Huge turn of events here for the Bruins. Well, they were trying to hit that wheel route on the right, right hash, and he saw it all the way. The ball hit the receiver. He just simply took it and took it to the house for a 39-yard pick six, and just like that, your USJ Bruins have the lead with 10-21 left to go here in the first half. Your new score, USJ 14 and Hardin County 7 on Worthy Road Studios. on Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Thompson & Smith, the area's premier independent insurance brokerage, has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today to discuss your insurance needs. Welcome back here to Bruin Football on Worthy Road Studios and on Grace Media Group's News Talk 101.5 FM. By the way, producing and directing on that end, the superstar, Mr. Bryce Mike. What up, Bryce? He's got his post-game show coming up, and man, is he coming along. English swinging that right foot and a straight-up knuckleball that goes out about the 32-yard <laughs> line. 
Sometimes it, it's, yeah. a, it's an oddly shaped ball. It is. Sometimes it, it takes a crazy bounce. English refreshments had five touchbacks this year so far after that last touchback that, he, that he's gotten there. So really nice job. And you know what's crazy? They're going to call his penalty, even though he didn't mean to. <laughs> I, honestly, You're welcome. You're welcome. I don't know what to say to that. And I don't generally get uh, tongue-tied much, welcome. but the I have nothing 20, for that. 22 years can't prepare you for me, can it? All right, so now the Tigers for the first time tonight playing from behind, twins to each side. Smith from the gun. Here's the snap, given off right tackle, bouncing out and taken down rudely at the 40-yard line. That's going to be a pickup of about five yards on the carry for the Tigers. Yeah, taken down there by number 11, Alex Wallace, came out of there. Really good defense. He hate the gain of five there, but really good defense. Jim Caff rope him down just like yeah, that. They, they're, yeah, playing, they're playing, really they're playing like a little Wallace. momentum he's right a good, now. He's a good football player. Yeah, absolutely. Still a young player for the Bruins, yeah. only a sophomore. And these DBs are excellent in run support as well. It's a gain of five. Tigers from their own 40-yard line. Just under 10 minutes left to go till the half. Here's the gift straight up the middle. Thought there was going to be a hole, but no. Nope, 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 nope. That thing closed down immediately by a duo of run stoppers, Noah Spencer and Alex Wallace. Combo for that tackle. Yeah, what about sophomore Noah Spencer right now? Uh, coming in, playing hard. Really nice wrap-up and take out. And that's what you're going to have to have. You're going to have to have slow down at least at the first level against this Tigers running game. They'll give them a game gain of a little more than two set up with third and two for the Tigers. They'll call it a three-yard gain. Third and two from their own 43-yard line. Here's Smith in the gun. Here's the snap. Handoff right tackle. Again, looked like there was going to be a hole. It's going to be enough for the first down, but good night. The Bruins are closing down on the ball closely. Let's see who was on the tackle. Now, now that time, Noah Spencer was not ready. He's looking, getting information from the sideline, and the ball was snapped when he wasn't looking, and another one of the Bruins come up and made the tackle, but not before the Tigers get the first down at their own 46-yard line. I don't know what that, that is. That was Riley Seals, number zero, in on, in on that tackle. He's trying to give you a heads up That's there. That's a zero. Yeah, this is a zero. All right, here's the camera here. That's a zero. This yeah, camera circles is a zero. zero. Well, that's <laughs> Never mind. What's that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Here we she's, go. Call the play. Hey, in, you so know what? Call the play. Go ahead. From their own 46-yard line come the Tigers. Here's Smith dropping back, looking to his left, completed at midfield, and a perfect tackle that time by Will Horton. Right after the reception, nothing doing. Horton wraps him up and takes him down for a minimal gain. We'll call it three yards on that play. Great tackle by Horton. Yeah, really, really nice job here. They sniffed it out. They'll give him the game, but took him, looked like a <laughs> yard back. Speak. And that was Alex Wallace, I believe, there on that yeah, tackle. Yeah. yeah, Horton launched himself to grab because the only way he was going to grab him, and he wrapped up perfectly and took him down. Great play by Will Horton. I know my good friend Bart's probably pretty happy about that. Second and seven for the Tigers from their own 49-yard line. Here's the handoff off right tackle, trying to bounce it out. Not much happening this time. You're not going sideline to sideline on this USJ Bruin defense. It's not going to happen. That'll end up being a loss on the play for Adam Harris. Yeah, really good pursuit by a host of Bruins there. Number seven, Sam McMillan's going to get credit for the tackle. But look at this. You've got three Bruins in right here. That play was never going anywhere. Uh, you also had in on that pursuit uh, eight Jace Barks. Does that yeah, surprise Bar anybody? Barksdale beating the wide receiver and closing up is what really prevented that play from going anywhere. And by the way, scraping the sidelines as well. Sam McMillan straight, taking that perfect angle, just perfectly done. Third and seven for the Tigers. Here's the snap. Quarterback draw. You hang that up. That's a gang tackle in the backfield led by Alex Wallace and by a young man we've been calling his name all year long, number 55, Ty O'Neill with the sack. I, I don't know what to say here. I'm not a very eloquent man, but look at number two, Parker Barnes right now, tackling that man like he owes him money. <laughs> Boy, just the defense fired up. They, I'm getting fired up. I'm not even doing anything. I'm starting to sweat. I wouldn't say that you're not doing anything. Well, I'm not doing nothing. something. Physical. I'm not really sure what it is you're doing, but you are doing something. Here's the snap. The punt, it's a low end over end punt taken at the 25 yard line, goes to the ground, but picks back up by Barksdale up to the 30, makes a man miss the 35, has a lane still on his feet, and finally taken down around the 40 yard line. 
wasn't able to field that thing cleanly. Didn't matter. Bounced back up to him, turned around, and made it at about a 15-yard return. And the Bruins will have excellent field position in this drive starting from their own 41-yard line with 634 left to go here in the first half. Yeah, I'd love to see about a six-minute, six 33-second drive here for the score. Uh, wouldn't you if you're a Bruin fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine any Bruin fan not wanting that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're like, you know what? We're well, like, like a one-score game here. They're going to spot that ball actually at the 39-yard line for the Bruins for Pettigrew and the Bruin offense. Pettigrew from the shotgun. Here's a snap to Finch up the middle. Not much cooking that time. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. He's greeted rudely by that defensive front of Hardin County. Let's see if we got that number. I don't have a 66. Yeah, I don't have a 66 on mine either. But, you know, the one thing about Finch, he was stopped. His forward progress was stopped. The whistle was right. He still didn't go down. Let the record show he did not go down. According to Chuck, he did not go down. Was it rudely? I'm sorry. Was I shouldn't have said that. No, that, I, 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 said, I shouldn't have said I apologize. That second wasn't and me. ten, halfway through the second quarter button. from the 39-yard line. Here's Pettigrew on the gun. A little end around give to the right side. Down the side. I makes a man miss. 50, 40, 35, 30. And finally taken down at the 22-yard line. That's a 48-yard gain for the Bruins. And the Bruins are back in business, marching down the field. Inside the 25-yard line of Hardin County, that's more than enough for a Thompson and Smith first down. Yeah, great job by Finch there. Here's a gift straight up the middle. Finch spinning and finally taken down, but not before he picks up eight on the play. Inside the red zone, the Bruins taken down at the 16-yard line, a gain of eight. It'll be second and two for the Bruins. And on that play before, we'd be remiss if we didn't give some credit to the Tigers, uh, number five, Braden Wilkes. If he doesn't make that tackle on the sideline, that thing is going all the way to the house because Finch was running like he had his hair on fire. Boy, can the Bruins strike here again. And I do believe we have our first time out of the game. We do. It's the Bruins, and we'll take it with them. With 5.22 left to go here in the first half, USJ 14 and Hardin County 7 on Worthy Road Studios. If you work outside or in a facility with no AC, or you're just struggling with this year's heat wave, it can really take a toll on your body and health. At Live Hydration Drip Spa, we can help you recover with our Beat the Heat special for only $59. Call or visit us online today to set your appointment. At Nest Realty Jackson, connections and relationships are at the heart of everything we do. We wake up every day with the goal of helping our agents build trust, relationships, and community. Let's connect. Home furnishings, appliances, bedding, and so much more. Kaufman's. At the Bypass and Oil Well Road in Jackson. Home furnishings for every room in your home. Custom upholstery options, too, with professional advice. Major appliances from America's top name brands. Mattresses and bedding accessories. Outdoor living and grilling, too. And our fully stocked warehouse helps prevent supply chain delays. Kaufman's for your life. Bruins second and two from the 16-yard line. High snap reeled in. Now across the middle, incomplete, and the Bruins, oh, well, I say lucky here, but there's a reason for that. The reason there wasn't a man in the area, because it looks like one of the Hardin County defenders held him and kept him going from that route. Maybe he saw something, like, if I don't do something here, there's going to be a problem. And, and it's absolutely what was the case. Yep. The Jace Barksdale on that slant once again, and actually that's a great play by the defender, because that was going to be another yeah. six. Yeah, drag across the middle there by, by Jace Barksdale. Uh, and you're probably right. Uh, Kevin Tarver had a decision to make, and he made he made a decision. He's like, you know what? He made I, the I, right I, one. Yeah, he did, because otherwise that thing was going to the house because there was nobody between Barksdale and the end zone. You know, now you, the, Coach Smith and staff will say, don't get beat. You know, it, it, sure. it's the first but thing. If you do, but if you when, do. When right. in Rome – do something. Mm, is that a thing? You're like when you're beat. There? Like when you're beat. Oh, I, get, I know, you know what, what it means. means. <laughs> I don't know if it's applicable well, here, well, but I do say, know what it means. Win in Pinson. Win in Pinson. Here we go. All right. First and goal for the Bruins from the seven yard line. Here's the snap. A pass over the middle, incomplete, and I don't know if they were on the same page on that one. Not sure. Looks like that pass was intended for Mills Terry, number twelve. He's on the left hash here. He'll curl in. 
And maybe just, that's, that was early pressure. That's what that was. And it's too bad because if Pettigrew was able to step in and, and throw, step into that throw, there was no defender on that side of the field. He could have led Terry straight in for the end. I, I think so. And the ball kind of came out a little awkwardly, too. Maybe the pressure may have been wet. Second and goal from the right hash. High snap once again given to Finch, and he is swarmed under by a host of Tigers. He'll lose about three yards back to the 13. Yeah, they had, they had that call there. Uh, that's going to back the Bruins up, unfortunately. Uh, they're going to be looking at where they're going to spot that. It looks like they're going to spot it. Yeah, right at the 13. Good call. I, I make contact every now and then. Yeah, you do. 4.50 left to go here in the first half. Bruins leading 14-7, to looking to make this a two-possession game. Now, remember the Bruins... They got the football first, so Hardin County will get the ball to start the third quarter. So we certainly hope the Bruins can cash in right here in the waning stages of the first half of this football game. So here we go. Third and goal for the Bruins from the Tiger 13-yard line. Three wide receiver set. Here's the snap. Swing pass to the left flat. He's got a man that's Finch to the 10. Bounces it out. Five. Stretches for the end zone. Talk to me, Zebras. Tell me something. They're going to say he is... Just short of the end zone. You watch this replay here. That's They're real close. Mark that ball out. Are they marking that at the about the one, one yard line? No, one inch line. Let's see. And it's the right call. That knee hit the sideline. Great job by Paul Schulze and his team with that instant replay. You can see. And that ball, Chuck's right. It's at the half yard line at best. It's a football length, if that. Huge fourth down conversion so here coming for the we Bruins. Go. Bruins definitely going for this one. Raleigh Seals in, and I think Coach Strapp wants to talk about it. He does. The Bruins take the timeout. It's their second of the half with 4.16 left to go in the first half. USJ 14 and Hardin County 7 on Worthy Road Studios. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Right, fourth and goal from the, about the four-inch line. Pettigrew from the gun. Here's the snap. It's a give to Fitz, fighting and into the end zone for a Garrett coming and heating touchdown. And the Bruins strike once again, shocking this crowd here at the beautiful Kirkland Field. Unbelievable job by the Bruins, who who were up for the moment as to this point and for the first half, not backing down at all, and great play call right there through the gut, right there through a gap where they've had success tonight running the ball. Boy, Carlock Nissan Stadium is on fire now, and with 4.21 left to go in the first half, your new score, USJ 21 and Hardin County 7 on Worthy Road Studios. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Automotive and Drive, Jackson. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care, and let your smile say it all. Just over four minutes left to go here in the first half. And if you're this Bruin team, especially with Hardin County getting the ball to start the third quarter, you sure would love a stop right here. Oh, absolutely. You, you would love a stop. You need a stop. You want a stop. Yeah, this would be huge. And, and really, ever since that tough no call, this has been the Bruins have been stepping their game up. 
English swings that big foot. It is going to hit at the 10, take a roll, and into the end zone. We have ourselves a touchback. Touchback number six on the season so far for English with a really nice leg. You know, he kind of kicks a knuckleball when he kicks it off. Like even that one was to the center of the field. That wasn't going end over end. That was kind of that was kind of going sideways. Yeah, That'd that be tough to hit if he was throwing it from 60 that feet. That didn't look inches. like it would be fun to try to catch. To no, I wouldn't want any part of that either. All right, four minutes and 13 seconds left. That's what the Bruins have to try to keep the Tigers off the board here in the last four and change. You ever return to kick? Let me ask you a question. Do you think I have? Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you've been playing football since you were like four. I'm an offensive lineman. I don't return. Yeah, your game. entire life, you never did anything but that? Not defensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> you are a large I've man. I've it a couple times. Three wide receiver set. Here's Smith with the handoff to Irvin. Off right tackle. Bounces it out. Runs over a defender. Ends up picking up five yards on the carry. Yeah, Noah Spencer in on the tackle there. And I thought I saw a little early movement up front. Maybe I didn't. No big deal there. Uh, uh, let's see. And it was just a great job of that left guard pulling. Yep, he did. He did. Sometimes I see things quicker than the camera. It's hard for the cameras to replicate. Do you? Do I, though? We'll call that a gain of five. Second and five for the Tigers. 342 left to go here in the first half. Twins to each side. Your wide is your left. Here's a quarterback draw by Smith. Taken down from behind. Ooh, once again. And it's O'Neal once again with the sack. That They need to scrap that quarterback draw or don't. Yeah, Ty O'Neal getting in there. And, and I'm going to tell you, falling down, still making that tackle. Huge play because you know what? That probably results in a first down for the Tigers. Great job by Ty O'Neal and getting pressure up the middle. What a big play this need, this could be for this Bruin defense if they could get a three and out with just over three minutes left to go and a two-touchdown lead here in the first half. So Smith from the gun, four wide receiver set. Irvin to his left. Here's the snap, looking to his left, complete at the 30-yard line for a first down, taken out of bounds about the 35-yard line. That's a huge completion for this Tiger offense. Yeah, Brooks Jones in on the tackle, but really soft coverage there. He was down past the sticks before anybody was there. He was wide open on that on that pass. Yeah, that was Braden Wilkes with the reception. Wilkes has been the go-to guy for Smith this evening. He's the one that made that beautiful comeback catch on that, I, I think, back shoulder throw. You know, you, you, you never know. We don't know how it's designed, but we know you, how it If resulted. you can perfect that pass on the high school level, oh, well, then. There's not a lot of anybody can do. Hello. All right, so here we go. Irvin trying to bounce it out. Now coming up from his safety position to help make that tackle. He doesn't actually make the tackle, but that was number 24, Brooks Jones. And it looked like there was a huge lane out there on the outside. And here comes your safety. Recognize it. He sees it, sniffs it out, and boom, beats the block. Here he comes. Boom. Doesn't make the tackle. But holy cow, and that may not have been Brooks it, it, That was a Brooks. Brooks is playing a, a linebacker tonight, but I'm going to tell you who cleaned it up was Sam McMillan there. But he was definitely stunned before McMillan got right. there. It was Ryan Hudson who Hutchison, that, who that was, right. number, number 21. Uh, that's going to be a timeout for Hardin County. It's their first. We'll take it with them. Your score with 226 left to go here in the first half. USJ 21 and Hardin County 7 on Worthy Road Studios. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. He shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Welcome back to USJ Bruin football. 226 left to go in the first half. Second and we'll call it six for the Tigers yeah, from their own 39-yard line, trailing by 14 to the Bruins, who's back in motion. Snap to Smith, looking, looking for the slant, completed at the 45 and just inside Bruin territory. He falls forward down to about the 47-yard line. That was an excellent pass that time by Carter Smith and finds his man Caleb McGee for the completion. Yeah, give a lot of credit to McGee here. He went up and got that ball. That, was, that pass was a little bit high. Uh, into, into double coverage there. McGee went up and got it. First down for the Tigers in Bruin territory. Smith pump fake looking. Now lets it fly out of bounds. Outstanding coverage. They were going to try to get that fan and go, but not biting that time was Will Horton, and Smith had to throw it out of bounds. Smart play by the quarterback and an excellent play by Horton. 
Yeah, and I'm going to tell you, this USJ defense, uh, everywhere, they're, they're playing so good up the middle just with three down linemen rushing uh, on, on the uh, on the, on the uh, rush there, but also their defensive backs. Not giving anything up easy for a very talented quarterback that Hardin County has in Smith. Smith, just a junior, 6'3", 185. From the gun, twins to each side. Back to his right. Here's the snap. Play action. Looking for that quick hit on the 45-yard line. Completed. Down. We'll take him down about the 43-yard line. Gain of about five, four yards on that play. Second and six for the Tigers. Yeah, really nice play there by number 21, Ryan Hutchison. The completion's made. It's about a four-yard gain, like you said, but as soon as it's caught, Hutchison wrapped him up and waited on help. He was coming down. I said second and six. I, I must have missed what they, they said. third down. I thought it was his second down, but we'll say third and six for the Tigers from the Bruin. 43-yard line with 128 left to go here in the first half. Here's Smith from the gun. Here's the snap. Drop straight back, surveying across the field. Fires a bullet straight across the middle. Incomplete intended that time for Braden Wilkes. And, boy, flashing that arm was Carter Smith. Yeah, Carter Smith threw the ball hard. But look at this coverage. Again, coming a linebacker making this coverage. This is Brooks Jones here closing this down, not giving anything up early. You've got to hit a spot there. You either throw over, he can catch it, or nobody else can. I'm going to give Brooks Jones the cut, the, the uh, uh Good boy, good job there on the zone Attaboy. coverage is what I was trying to say. Attaboy, thank you on the zone coverage. Good job by well, Brooks and Jones. And Parker Barnes got up in the air. He got his hands up, and that ball just went over his fingertips. Now Sawyer trying to get off the field before the snap, and they will on fourth down. Boy, all just all over the place that time. Here's the snap. It's a wobbler that is taken at the 25-yard line. That's a great job by Barksdale to come up and catch that ball and not let it hit and take about a 10, 15-yard roll. So the Bruins will take over first and 10 from their own, let's see, what are we looking at here? 20. 28, 29, eight -ish, something like that. Eight-ish, yeah. Now there's one timeout left in a minute 13. You do not get the ball to start the third quarter. You play it safe here. You're, you're about you're that. See, I wanted to do that. That was what I was going to ask you. Is you have here, here's why. Uh, yeah, there, that's is, your job. there is no right answer. <laughs> there is no wrong answer. Uh, here, you have all the momentum in your favor. But what you don't want to do, we've seen Brooks Jones have a pick six tonight. You don't want to rush a play, something crazy happening, and, and flip the momentum. If you can get a big play on the ground here, if you can get a big play with a slant, something like that, that you feel is relatively safe with Pettigrew, I think okay. Then all of a sudden, maybe we have something. Right. I don't know that you force this. And one thing that's relative is, uh, relevant is that the Tigers do have two timeouts. So here we go. Finch with the carry off right tackle. Bounces it out. Still going. Falling forward for an outstanding gain on first down. He'll pick up seven up to the 33-yard line. Second and three for the Bruins with exactly one minute left to play here in the first half. And in no particular hurry, nor should they be. If you started Kevin Finch tonight on your fantasy football team, you're very, very happy because he has had positive yardage, especially after those first two drives, on every time he's touched the ball. And if you have a high school fantasy football team, we need to talk after the game. Uh, <laughs> Here is Pettigrew rolling across his body, flips it out into the flat to his running back, completed, still on his feet, all the way up to midfield. Wow, what a acrobatic play that time. Is that Barksdale? Yeah, that's Barksdale. That's Why would I be surprised back. by that? Yeah, that guy makes everything happen. He dropped back like he was it, it going to be a, a running back, dropped back a few yards. What an athletic oh, job by Pettigrew that there. great job Throw it to Pettigrew. the left side of his body. That's a hard throw for a right-handed quarterback. Why are you touching And taken down inside uh, Tiger territory with 38, 33 seconds left. That was a Thompson and Smith first down. We'll call it the 48-yard line of the Tigers. Pettigrew from the gun, straight back drop, setting up a screen on the left hash. He has a few blockers in front of him. Great job by that Tiger defense of getting through it. Completed that time to number zero, Raleigh Seals, for his first reception of the evening. A gain of about eight yards to the 40-yard line and goes out of bounds with 26 seconds left. Yeah, 26 and almost a half seconds left. You still have a timeout. Now you're cooking. Now you're getting to think, hey, we take a big shot down the field. What do we do? Do we get in field goal range. English's leg has, lo has looked good tonight on his extra points. Now I think it's when you open up the playbook. Like I was saying earlier. They have had they haven't had a lot of trouble moving the ball up and down this field on this Hardin County defense. Second and two 
Here's Pettigrew calling his own number on the short side option 40, 30, and ran out of bounds just inside the 30-yard line. We'll call it the 28-yard line with 20 seconds left to go. It would be a 45-yarder from here. You know, when you've got guys like Finch, Barksdale, you've got big receivers like Sane, uh, Terry tonight, you've got uh, Riley Seals out there, you've got big targets. Sometimes you can forget how yeah, athletic Carney. Pettigrew is. Carney, you can forget how athletic he is. He can get you chunk yardage when he needs to. Why are you touching me? 20 seconds left to go here in the first half. First and 10. That was a Thompson and Smith first down from the Tiger. 29-yard line. Seals in motion. Shifts over to the right. Berkeley from the pe from Pettigrew from the gun. Gives to Finch on the end of round. Bounces out. 35, 30, 20, 15, 10. Cuts back inside. Still on his feet. And down inside the five-yard line. With 11 seconds left to go, that's Kevin Finch. Op open in this hole up here is Riley Seals. You will see oh. this block right here. A oh, hard beautiful to kick out. Yeah, absolutely right. And looky there. Davis Sane. Sane once again with a phenomenal block. And the Bruins are knocking on the door once again. They'll use their timeout and we'll take it with them with 11 seconds left to go here in the first half. It's your Bruins 21 in Hardin County 7 on Worthy Road Studios. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. All right, here we go. 11 seconds left to go for the Bruins here in the first half. They marked him down at the five-yard line. Enough time for two plays. I say Sane on the fade. Here we go. Pettigrew from the gun. Drops back, looking straight across the middle. Has a man in the back of the end zone, broken up. He was going for his tight end, Raleigh Seals. He was covered. Great job of the defense that time. Only five seconds falls, goes off the clock, 6.3, as the rains start to fall here. Yeah, rains are coming down here. Uh, Sane looked like he, he, he was kind of, he wasn't open, but single coverage on the right side. Barksdale also had single coverage, went to a, a tried and true target in Riley Seals. But you know what? You still got to feel good. And, and I, I love this decision, though, because with 6.3, you don't want to take any chances. Coach Strapp said, I want to get the points. I want to go for the field goal, which just amounts to a slightly longer extra point. Only difference being, from the right hash. The Bruins late getting a guy in. He's coming in on the field. English getting ready to kick this one. The play clock down to two. They got to snap it. Here's the snap, the kick, the hold. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And with 1.5 seconds left to go here in the first half, USJ now has a 17-point lead, 24-7, to seven, with a second and a half left in here, and we'll take it with them on Worthy Road Studio. Thompson & Smith, the area's premier independent insurance brokerage, has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today to discuss your insurance needs. Well, the clock says 20 minutes, and now, now they shaved it down. They say three seconds left to go here. So not a second and a half, but three seconds left to go in the first half. And if people see in this score around the state, uh, not just West Tennessee, around the state, they're like, whoa, whoa, for real. That's the Bruins we know. This is a heck of a football team they're playing right now. Yeah, they, they came into this game 100% ready to play. So let's see how Coach Strap elects to handle these last three seconds. Do you kick it deep here? Squib it? How do you do this? We'll find out immediately. Here's your kick. It's a squib. Hits about the 35-yard line. Takes a bounce. Picked up at the 25-yard line and taken down about the 34. And that 
is an end of an extremely exciting first half of football. Your USJ Bruins leading Hardin County at the half. 24 to 7. Okay, Paul, if we're ready, we want to take it down to the field where George Tennyson will have a word with head coach Michael yeah. Strap. Michael Strap, we, congratulations on great football, first half football. Uh, we very easily could be up 35 to 7. Had a bad call here, uh, passing the fence that wasn't called, and a non catch that was called a catch. Your thoughts on the first half? Uh, you know, first half, kids are playing hard. Uh, defense is getting after it. Uh, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a dang good football team over on that other sideline. And we got two more quarters to play. So, you know, it, it ain't over. Our kids got to play harder. It's a 0-0 zero, zero game coming out of halftime. Hammer down, Coach. Go get them. Thank you so much for your time. Back up to you guys. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Automotive Van Drive, Jackson. This is how we Friday night. How do you Friday night? This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. No matter how you Friday night, you always win at Kaufman. Hey, this is Chuck Walker with Southeastern Termite and Pest Control. If you live in West Tennessee, you have a need for the services we offer. We treat for all types of pests, including bed bugs, brown recluse spiders, and other hard-to-treat pests. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to encapsulate a crawl space. Give us a call to hear how to achieve the same thing and save thousands. Southeastern Termite and Pest Control can handle all of your termite and pest control needs, wood fungus and moisture barriers, real estate closing letters, and so much more. Southeastern, 731 660 1052. At Alive Hydration Drip Spa, we offer top-of-the-line IV nutritional therapy, which has a wide variety of health benefits. From immune system boosters and skin care, fatigue, energy, and even hangover relief, you can be sure we have an IV blend that's right for you. All of our blends are administered by one of our experienced nurses in a spa setting to ensure you leave feeling re-energized and refreshed. Give us a call or visit our website to book your appointment today. We have what it takes to make you feel alive again at a live hydration drip spa. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. At Arrington Funeral Directors, we accept all pre arranged funerals. So you may have pre arranged your funeral in this town with another funeral home or even in another state. But we accept all pre-arranged funerals because we're here to serve families. We realize you have a busy lifestyle. And at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. The name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson.
Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. Football is here. Get touchdown savings at McCoy's Heating and Air. Cooler weather is coming. Tackle the season ahead with McCoy's and be comfortable this season. To get your furnace ready, we are now offering one time cleaning for only $90. Score big! Call McCoy's and schedule your $90 cleaning today. Call 731 668 7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. This is how we Friday night. How do you Friday night? This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. No matter how you Friday night, you always win at Kaufman. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. At Alive Hydration Drip Spa, we offer top-of-the-line IV nutritional therapy, which has a wide variety of health benefits. From immune system boosters and skin care, fatigue, energy, and even hangover relief, you can be sure we have an IV blend that's right for you. All of our blends are administered by one of our experienced nurses in a spa setting to ensure you leave feeling re-energized and refreshed. Give us a call or visit our website to book your appointment today. We have what it takes to make you feel alive again at Alive Hydration Drip Spa. Lifestyle Vision, located at Thompson Farms, offers patient-centered, comprehensive eye exams. Select your new look with our latest styles from exclusive brands. Come see us Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, or schedule an appointment anytime online. Lifestyle Vision, where compassion meets commitment. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Automotive Van Drive, Jackson. For anyone contemplating pre-planning, we can tell you from our experience, it's much easier to make funeral plans and record them now than wait until emotions are running at their highest. With pre-planning, you can free your mind and heart from having to make big decisions during a time of grief and instead enjoy the freedom to focus on the memories of a life well lived. Hey, this is Chuck Walker with Southeastern Termite and Pest Control. If you live in West Tennessee, you have a need for the services we offer. We treat for all types of pests, including bed bugs, brown recluse spiders, and other hard-to-treat pests. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to encapsulate a crawl space. Give us a call to hear how to achieve the same thing and save thousands. Southeastern Termite and Pest Control can handle all of your termite and pest control needs, wood fungus and moisture barriers, real estate closing letters, and so much more. Southeastern, 731 660 1052. It's time for the fourth annual Lifeline Car Giveaway. And Joe Mahan Ford is proud to donate a car again this year. Give blood with Lifeline between Memorial Day and Labor Day for a chance to win a 2019 Ford EcoSport. Join Lifeline. And Joe Mahan Ford and give blood this summer. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. For anyone contemplating pre-planning, we can tell you from our experience, it's much easier to make funeral plans and record them now than wait until emotions are running at their highest. With pre-planning, you can free your mind and heart from having to make big decisions during a time of grief and instead enjoy the freedom to focus on the memories of a life well lived.
tired of being seen and not heard? At Lifestyle Vision, we believe in patient-centered quality eye care for West Tennessee, which is why we are locally owned and operated. Come see us Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, or schedule an appointment anytime online. Lifestyle Vision, where compassion meets commitment. Well, if you're just tuning in, no, nobody has the score wrong. It's right. At the half, your USJ Bruins, 24, and Hardin County, state ranked. Hardin County, 7, after 24 minutes of play. Let's not start loving on each other just yet. There's 24 minutes to play, and this Hardin County team is legit. So it's a great first half, but that's all it is is a great first half. You're going to have to put four in to beat this team. Before I give you some thoughts on this first half, let's see what's going on around West Tennessee here in week number four. Dresden all over Gibson County tonight at Dresden. Undefeated are the Lions. They lead 42 to nothing halfway through the second quarter in that one. McKenzie, the Rebels at the half, also undefeated. They're also taking on the Rebels. This time the, the boys from Troy, O'Bine in McKenzie and the Rebels treating them rudely, 42-7. to seven. Coach Comer's bunch with the lead at the half. South Fulton and West Carroll, that game is officially at the half. Just went there and it's knotted up at 20. What a game that is. West Carroll undefeated. The Red Devils 1-1 one one on the season. Halls 2-1 on the season at the half, leading FACS out of Cordova, a team the Bruins will be playing this year. And right now, Halls, at, and again, wow, y'all, 2-1. and one, They lead FACS 13-6 at the half. Speaking of the half, Haywood County at the half, having no trouble with Lexington right now. 28-7 Tomcats all over the Big Red Tigers. Here's a great game. And I, I, you can't call this an upset, at least. I, I mean, these are two really good teams. Huntington at home. Paul Ward Stadium, they lead Riverside 12 to 7. And what does that say about how good we already know how good McKenzie is, but what does that say about McKenzie who handled Huntington in week number one at Paul Ward Stadium, and right now Huntington with a 12-7 lead over the Panthers. If you remember last year, Bass, Riverside was undefeated. They were 6-0, 7-0 going to that Huntington game, and this is when Huntington got hot. They beat them uh, last year. Huntington matches up really well for whatever reason against Riverside, and again, a lot of ball game left. The only thing you've done in the first half is prove you can. You know, you hadn't done anything, but yeah, 12-7. Uh, the Mustangs leading the Panthers. Or the, uh, what are they? The Riverside? They're the Panthers. Panthers. Okay, good. I got drew a blank. South Gibson, the Hornets, after that heartbreaking loss last week at the end of the game against the Bulldogs, right now at the half, or I'm not quite at the half in the second, leading Kirby 21 to nothing. And, you know, thing about it is Kirby's been good in the past this year to come into this one winless, but the Hornets all over them right now. Here's one. Boy, every time you think you have high school football figured out, the answer is you don't. At the half, in a game that you can watch at the Trinity Facebook page as well as WNWS platform. Dave and Stan on the call. They're up in Golden City, if you will. Union City, 3-0, leading Trinity 21-19 at the half. I, did not see, I was about to say, I, I, don't, I don't know what – I didn't see that one coming. And now, I, knew, I do know that freshman running back, Kai. I forget his last name. The freshman running back from Trinity is something special. Uh, I've, I've watched him play, seen videos of him when he was in Crockett County, I believe. Uh, this kid is something special, and, and what, a, what a great effort so far. Coach Butler got the Lions playing well tonight. In the second quarter, Westview, after starting out the season 0-2, got a win last week, trying to do the same thing at uh, late stages of the second, are blanking Fairview, the Yellow Jackets, in, in Martin tonight, and it's a battle of the view, 20 to nothing Westview, late stages of the second quarter. Uh, let's see if we can get you some more here. Uh, Jackson Christian, by the way, late stages of the second quarter, was leading ECS. Listen to this one, y'all, 35-7. to yeah, you know, I, I thought Jackson Christian was going to get the game. I called it by by ten, uh, but yeah, way to jump on. And that that Jackson Christian team is so explosive offensively. But I mean, to to score points, you still have to play defense. Other team gets the ball. It's not make it take it, right? To hold ECS just to seven is hmm, a very make impressive. Make it take it football. That make could it. Get real They can get ugly quick. Uh, there ain't no doubt about that. All right, it was about five or six minutes away from the start of the third quarter where your Bruins lead 24-7 to over the visiting Tigers from Hardin County. Let's get your impressions of the first half. You know, I, my, my, my impressions are this. USJ came to play, obviously, number one, and what a defensive effort that they've had and what a, what a great effort they've had up front. And they what they've done is they have made hay 
everywhere they can, whether it's running up the, the ball up the middle with Finch, running it, running it, running it, running it, all of a sudden, boom, setting up something for the outside, or when you needed a, a drag route by Seals or, or by Barksdale, uh, dropping back in a screenplay, it's been there. Uh, it's really, I don't know how you could have drawn this up better if you're a coach for the Bruins uh, for this first half. It, it's literally almost everything, with w- exception of one call, has went the Bruin way. Ah, my longtime friend, Mr. Thomas Pugh. His son Jackson's been going to USJ here for quite a while. They got another youngster here as well. Great to see my friend Thomas. Started working with Thomas back in 2000. In 2000. When he was back with Newstalk 101.5 in a whole nother life. Great to see him. The Tigers are back on the field. So I, I want to talk about that first half a little bit. You know, Hardin County comes into this game, and, and well, I mean, their ranking is deserved. They're legit. They're a very good football team. The Bruin team that I watch right now in this first half, I'm going to just say this, and you may or may not agree with this. I don't think Union City would have wanted any of that because they have it going tonight. I mean, they have it going. And on both sides of the football, they're hard cut is bigger than they are, but you wouldn't know it. I mean, they're winning at the point of attack on both sides of the ball. They're faster sideline to sideline, and they're not making mistakes. They're doing well in special teams. Uh, this, team is, this team is not making mistakes in this first half, and – if you execute like that and you can play with this team, there's nobody on the schedule the rest of the way or in the playoff that this team couldn't beat, couldn't beat or play with if they play the way they did those first 24. Yeah, and, and we have to we have to be careful with this because, again, all you've done is proven you can. You've got so the second it. half. I know, and I'm just talking about everybody, like collectively everybody out there. We all need to take a breath if we're pulling for the Bruins right now because like they've proven they can, but this team has it in them. They have had it in them, and I didn't see any. You know, I felt like that Union City game, it's a little bit warmer outside. I felt like I could almost, you know, if the meter starts at 100, kind of like your gas tank, and you go 100 miles, and then you're sitting on, you know, three quarters of a tank, then half a tank. It felt like if the quarters went by, so did the, the, the energy, the emotional level. I'm telling you, I saw zero letdown. It almost looked like they were stopping every 20 miles to fill up again the way that first half went. I think if they carry that energy uh, into the second half, I mean, again, this is a three score game it's 17 points it's a three score game no matter how your math is this is three scores here yeah you know we uh had a call this week said that Dyersburg was going to beat Munford and I thought no not this not the 22 to 2022 version of these two teams the Trojans uh two and one coming into this season handled by the Choctaws in week two uh are getting educated at home by the Cougars Munford undefeated on the season 23 nothing Cougars at the half yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes fans like to call shows and, and show their, their fandom. So good for you. I mean, probably root for the Trojans and, you know, been there, done that. I, I agree. But, yeah, they're, they're not winning that game. Yo, what's, what smells so good? <laughs> Is that food? I don't, I don't yeah, I got it. It better be. Uh, uh, you know, we know it's, it's hit or miss here in the press box. It's a hard knock life. By the way, I get you an update from that Jackson Christian ECS game. Oh, man, I, I thought this was going to be a war, a, a, a battle. 42 to 7 at the half. Jackson Christian is leading ECS. That was a two and a Which one's a bigger surprise right now? Of score, the three score wise. between the private schools here in this town? Yeah. I, I, they all have to be classified. To, I'm not surprised that Jackson Christian is winning. I'm surprised they're up by 35 at the half against J- uh, Jackson Christian. Or I mean, ECS. ECS. Yeah. Uh, I'm very much surprised that Trinity is only down two at Union City. Uh, and that's not about Trinity. Uh, Trinity's bouncing. Hey, Blake Butler's a good coach, and they got a good-looking young team, and they're starting to round into form. But that ECS team already came to Jackson to beat Trinity. All right? Uh, that, that's one thing. And we've seen that Union City team with our own eyes. So we know what they are. We know what they did to Lake County. You know, they're, they're legit, and Trinity's not blinking. And I absolutely expected USA to come out here and play ball tonight. I really did. I'm not surprised by this whatsoever uh, but I, uh, that they're winning, but I am surprised that they're up by 17 on one of the best teams in all of West Tennessee, a team that I think anybody before this first half would have told you. And by the way, they could easily still come back and win this football game, so we're not putting that by them, but... I mean, almost everybody that gave you a top five in West Tennessee, every single one of them would have Hardin County in that top five. And the, not the Bruins. Right. You know, 
and boy, at least through 24, it sure looked like the opposite. You know, you never want to have a loss to wake you up. But I was, as I was in the restroom talking to some guys and over, you know, overhearing some conversations, like you know what? Maybe that Union City game kind of shook us loose. Maybe it let them know we're not going to just show up and win every week. And if that's the case. What a phenomenal loss in week two of the season for the for the Bruins because wow. it absolutely – they do look like a, a completely different team with a team of at least equal talent on the other side of the sideline, if not more. And the Bruins, after 14 quarters of play this season, have surrendered 26 points. I mean, they're just not giving yeah. anything up. You know, that's not by accident. You know, I freely admit TRA and Liberty's offenses aren't going to scare anyone. But they never came close to scoring. That's the first. It would only be an issue if they were moving the ball up and down the field, but they didn't. Right. You know. And remember, that Union City game was not at zero at the half. You know, I, we need to start talking more. I mean, we talk about all, like, Jace Barksdale as a receiver and Berkeley Pettigrew and Finch and everybody. But we need to look a little bit closer at this USJ defense because it occurs to me, at least in the first part of this season, this is one of the better Bruin defenses I've seen in 20-plus years. Yeah, I'm not going to give you any any arguments at all there with that. I think it's been the most impressive unit so far this season, early season, for the Bruins. A light rain is falling here to start the third quarter. Bruins had the ball to start this game. So English will kick off, and it's a squib that hits on the 40, bounces at the 30, and taken at the 25-yard line, and taken up to about the 39-14 yard return for the Tigers. On that return, Ryan Weeks, Weeks with the carry, gets it up to the, what did I say, 34-yard line, make that the 39-yard line, and that's where the Tigers will take their first possession of the second half. I think it's like a design squib kick there to, uh, co coming out of the half. Yeah, especially with it, like it. You know, it being wet. Right. You know, like Tough that. to get that plant foot down, kick all the way through that ball. I don't mind that. For sure. Here we go to start the third quarter. Hardin County with the football from their own 39-yard line. Carter Smith, the quarterback from the gun. Here's Smith. Handoff off the right side. Nice play by the Tigers' offensive line. Hope opening up a hole. Six-yard gain on first down up to the 45-yard line. The right side of this Hardin County offensive line, and it's a big one. Does a great job of opening up a hole. Huge hole right there. Nice job on the first play by the Tigers. Second and four from their own 45-yard line. Yeah, Ryan Hutchinson tried to get in there and make the tackle. Just missed. Parker Barnes was there to clean it up, but not after the six-yard game. Second and four. Smith from the gun. Handoff once again, this time off laugh tackle. It's going to be just enough for the first down. Looks like we have some mustard at the end of this play. Believe that's what I saw. I believe I saw a flag on the play. This ball's right at midfield, and it's going to be a face mask against the Bruins. Yeah, Alex Wallace is going to get well. Would have gotten credit for that ta uh, that tackle if not for the for the flag. That's going to move it up ten. You think still, still results in a first down for the Tigers. The early message here for Hardin County is we want to reestablish the trenches here and run the football and try to wear USJ down if you can. That looks like the game plan, at least for the first couple of plays coming out as the Tigers are now into Bruin territory at the Bruin 45-yard line, 11 minutes to go here in the third quarter. Carter Smith from the gun with the snap handoff, bouncing it back out to the outside. Not a lot doing. Good good job by the running back that time just to get three yards on that one. Not much doing there. That was Adam Harris, but able to bounce it out and pick up three. Yeah, Noah Spencer and company in on the tackle there. But those holes are opening at least for three or four yards on the carry. Those holes are there, and, and, and he's good enough to get through it. Williams able good enough to get through it. Tigers from the Bruin 42-yard line trailing USJ 24-7. Smith from the gun, single wide receiver to each side. Here's the snap, play action, looking for his man, throws behind him, tried to hit him right outside the 30-yard line, a little 10-yard out. 
his intended receiver that time, Braden, Braden Wilkes, planted and Smith just missed him. That's a couple of those on that same route that he's missed just behind his receiver. Yeah, really a good coverage Boy, here. Uh, had to kind of had, had to throw it behind. Looks like Barksdale there and, and on the coverage. And of course, yeah, you'd they're, expect they're that. They're going after Barksdale. They're not afraid. I mean, that, and that's your matchup because that's Wilkes, and they're going to put Barksdale on Wilkes. That's your matchup right there for for Hardin County. They got to find another receiver to step up because right now the coverage is there by Barksdale. Second and down and six. Here's Smith wanting to go for the home run down the sidelines. The ball's batted down. Actually, he's held on to that ball and looking for his man at the 35-yard line. That pass incomplete. I thought he'd thrown the football. Yeah, you had you had guys like Parker Barnes and other people in on that tackle there to shut that play down. Uh, he, he good job rolling out and holding on the ball, trying to make something out of not a lot, but eventually enough Bruins were able to come through. And that there. tells you about the arm strength and the hand strength, the grip of Carter Smith. That is not easy to do, especially with this drizzle that we have coming down now. So that's going to set up the stick save fourth down. Is that right? Yeah, it looks like. Okay. Oh, it's definitely fourth down. Right, looks like fourth Harden and, County's going fourth for and it. Six, Harden County looks as if they're going to go for it from the Bruin 41-yard line, trailing by 17. Twins to the left. Here's Smith with the snap, looking all kinds of time now. Fires downfield and behind his intended target once again. That was his tight end, Caleb McGee. Tried to hit him around the 25-yard line, threw the ball behind him. Yeah, Will Horton in on really nice coverage there for the Bruins. They're not giving anything over the middle. They're, the only place they're open is behind, to the left, opposite of where they're running. They're not giving anything up on that inside set where you could catch and go. Well, I got choked up on that. Was for, forgive me, friends. Very emotional. Yeah, I understand. Not that kind of choked up. Well, I'm, literally. I'm, uh, I'm but excited, hey, I'll tell you what, Will Horton has really had a good game. Yeah, both the Horton boys have played good all season long. But I'm telling you, these defensive backs, they said, Look, we're up for this task. Sling the rock. And it's all of them. It's all not a couple of, them. of the defensive all backs. They're them. all playing extremely well right now. So the Bruins with their first uh, possession of the second half. It's an end around to Barksdale. He's hit, still on his feet, still going, dragging defenders, still on his feet, refusing to go down, showing you he is way more than fast. He's also strong as a bull. He'll get seven yards on the play up to the 48-yard line of the Tigers. I feel like I need to go get that man's autograph. Look at this right here. How many times has he touched? We got one really hard hit. Try to be wow, shoulder tackle. Two, three, four. <laughs> yeah, he still don't want to shoulder tackle that guy. Five, six. He's being drugged back here. He's not stopping. He gets forward momentum going again. Yeah. First contact was by one of the defensive linemen on the interior defensive lineman, about 300 pounds, and he shook him right off. Here's Finch from the left side. He'll lose yardage on this one. Nothing doing. Lose about two yards on the play. Sniffed out well by this Crockett, uh, this uh, Hardin County defense, and the Bruins will face a third, and we'll call it five from their own 46-yard line. Yeah, Rory Jones kind of hopping around there. Looks like somebody may have rolled into his ankle there on the tackle, and Jones has really opened up some holes uh, on the offensive line. Line so far for the Bruins. Huge third and five coming up. 8.47 left to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, you're right. Uh, first down conversion would be huge for the Bruins. Taking a lot more clock off this thing. Here we go. Third down. Play action. Pettigrew all kinds of time now steps up. Breaks the tackle. Ball is on the ground. He'll end up picking up two yards, but it's not enough. He'll get up to about the 48-yard line, and that'll set up fourth down and about three for the Bruins. Can't imagine you roll the dice here in this situation. Play the clock, play a good hard defense, uh, and punt this football away, and it looks like what Coach Strap is going to do. Yeah, absolutely. 28 seconds, 27 on the, on the play clock. Let that thing tick down. Punt the ball when you need to. you got a three-score lead here. Absolutely the right call. Yeah, the offensive line's done a great job, uh, and that one just uh, broke down a little bit. Uh, you, only, you only have so long that you, that, that, that you can hold on pass blocking, So, uh, and I thought they've held up pretty well. So here we go. Bruins with the punt from their own 48 yard line a high punt that turns over hits at the 30 yard line and actually takes a Hardin County bounce spins back if that's a golf shot you love it and the Tigers will take over at their own 31 yard line with 742 left to go here in the third quarter you know how much compression you have to put on a golf ball to get to, to stick and then roll back like that yeah, no I don't it's a lot the answer is a lot that, is that it? Is this, yeah, well, I mean, you I mean, don't have an answer how I, much it is. You think I, I can do that a lot? I was, I was, I was all interested. I thought you had the like the exact number. <laughs> we'll call, we'll call Riley. We'll ask, we'll ask like, her. What's that equation that you know is uh, the only uh, thing? Gravity, you know? yeah, negative 9.8 meters per second uh, squared, Earth's gravitational pull. <laughs> 
that, what yeah. he said. <laughs> Three wide receiver set. Smith dropping back, firing across the middle. Beautiful reception, still on his feet, breaks a tackle, makes another man miss. All kinds of dodge tackles that time. Great reception for Hardin County. That's number one. And, again, our apologies. Our roster does not have a number one, but that was a great play. A beautiful missile by Smith in between two defenders, and his receiver does the rest for the first down. Yeah, really nice work there once he has the ball to not go down. And after the first down, gain even more yards to bring the ball up right around midfield. 49-yard yeah, line of Hardin County, first and 10. Smith from the pistol for the first time tonight. Hand off to Wilkes, breaks the tackle, but a host of defenders bring him down, led by number 24, Brooks Jones, and that's going to be about a yard loss on the play back to the 48, setting up a, what are we looking at here, Chucky? Is that second and 11? Second and like. 11. Sam McMillan almost had a big four or five yard loss, but he was able to slow him down enough for Brooks Jones to come in there. Yeah. Hey, Brooks plays like he shot out of a missile every single time we watch him I, play. You know, I think the speed of USJ's defense is giving that monster off offensive line a lot of problems oh they're getting around the edge yeah. a lot it, 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 great job by the line playing up the middle too they're not giving the middle up second 11 from the 48 yard line smith going for it all on the go down to the 25 out of bounds let his receiver just a little too far out of bounds outstanding coverage and for some reason they just are intent on going after Jace Barksdale. At that time, it was not Wilkes that they, was the intended target. It was one of the young men whose name we don't have. But look at that, step for step, perfect coverage, using this, the boundary as a defender. It's impossible to do it better than that. Barksdale's got just as good as coverage as Thompson and Smith insurance on that play. But let's talk about these defensive backs, and that's allowing <laughs> these linebackers well and edges to come up through there because these defensive backs are playing great coverage. You don't have to have a safety spy over the top. Third and 11, twins to each side, Smith, Friday. Fires across the middle, complete to the 40. 35 still on his feet, still going, dragging defenders. Finally taken down at the 28-yard line. That is his tight end. Caleb McGee, the senior tight end, is having a big game here tonight. But, again, you look at the replay here, and what's, what screams is a missile for a right arm that just zips right by the defense, finds his tight end. Huge pickup for the Tigers. They're in business. First and 10, 6-15 left to go in the third from the Bruin. 27-yard line. Smith from the gun. Here's the snap. A give off to Wilkes. Not much doing in the backfield. Wrapped up by a host of defenders. And leading that way, Ty O'Neill. Surprise, surprise. You know, and going back to the last play, Bass, what concerns me a little bit now, McGee has been, that play has been there. They, this is the third time they've used it tonight. He's a tough matchup, and Smith has got such a rifle. Yeah. He can pinpoint it, penetrate that zone coverage, and McGee's a huge target. He's shown he can go up and get a ball, too. Yeah. That's the only action they've had going from the passing game yeah. tonight. Yeah, that was actually Tylen Irvin on that carry, and they tackle him high, but show, though Neal showed that strength, was able to get it done anyway. Sending up a, a quick slant to the left side, completed 15, 10, 5, and into the end zone untouched. It's going to be Braden Wilkes, a little slip screen. They flashed the, the uh, set up a screen to the right side flat. USJ went with it, and that slip screen was right there. Looked like Barnes maybe slipped a little bit, and once he got that pass completed, had a convoy into the end zone. Touchdown, Hardin County. Yeah, really nice play call there by Hardin County, and executed perfectly there. All right, so Foster in for the extra point. It is up, and it is good. And your new score with 526 left to go here in the third quarter is USJ 24 and Hardin County 14 on Worthy Road Studios. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Nissan and Carlock Prestige, the name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Hey, this is Chuck Walker with Southeastern Termite and Pest Control. If you live in West Tennessee, you have a need for the services we offer. We treat for all types of pests, including bed bugs, brown recluse spiders, and other hard-to-treat pests. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to encapsulate a crawl space. Give us a call to hear how to achieve the same thing and save thousands. Southeastern Termite and Pest Control can handle all of your termite and pest control needs, wood fungus and moisture barriers, real estate closing letters, and so much more. Southeastern, 731 660 1052. 
Welcome back to High School Football. Your coverage of Bruin Football. 24-14. Bruins with the lead. Here's the kickoff. Picked up at the 23-yard line. Finds a seam. That's English and returns it all the way up to the 40. So the Bruins once again in business. Your kicker returning it to the 16 yards to the 40 for the Bruins. I love that kid. I, I like him a lot, too. I really do. And, you know, kind of got in there. He looked up after it hit him, but he was still able to turn nothing into something here. Nice return by, again, the freshman. I want to make sure we don't have multiple number nines out there, but I don't think we do. I don't have multiple nines on my roster, so if that is the case, I sincerely apologize. If there is another nine on the sidelines, you can let me know, but I don't see one. All right, Bruins looking for an answer. Hardin County has cut that lead down to 10. Pettigrew from the gun. Play action. Needs to get it off in a hurry. Looking for his man. Trying to get Raleigh Seals. He was under all kinds of pressure and outstanding coverage that time by the Hardin County secondary. Uh, man, what a rush. And a great job by Pettigrew getting that ball off. Yeah, he really did. You got three men coming at him here. He throws a ball that you know that's relatively close. Great coverage by number 10 for Hardin County. Um, yeah, he's – we has one of don't have him, yeah. Good job, jailbreak, though. Good coverage. Jailbreak blitzes. That time, and Pettigrew lucky to get that ball off. Second and 10 from the 40. Now calling his own number. Zone reach straight up the middle. Knocked off his feet at the 49 after a punishing hit that time by Sam Tanner. But look at Berkeley Pettigrew. He jumps right up, and on that option, Reed picks up nine. Yeah, a great run here. We talked about it. He's got the athleticism to make something happen out of nothing. Ooh. He was hit hard there and then hit again there on the ground. Man, what a stick that time, but Pettigrew jumps right up. So here's a huge play in this football game. Third down and one for the Bruins from their own 49-yard line. Here's Pettigrew with the give to Finch up the middle. He's got the first down and much more all the way down to the 43-yard line of Thompson and Smith. First down. Now let's go to the replay. Chuck, watch the interior of this USJ offensive line firing off the ball. That left guard does an amazing job locking on. number. Look at that number for me. That's one of the captains. That's number 62. Mark Cox with an amazing block that time, springing the first down, that Thompson and Smith first down. The clock keeps going, and the Bruins keep this drive going now into Tiger territory, down to the 43. Finch was hit at the 46-yard line. He wasn't brought down until he got to the 43. Pettigrew from the gun, running the option to the short side, now pitches it to Finch. He'll go out of bounds about the 40-yard line, a gain of three on that play. A, a long two, if you will. We'll call it second and seven from the Tiger 40-yard line. Yeah, I haven't seen the pitch play much this year for U.S. I believe that's the first one that we've seen. Good to know that well, they've know, they got it in there. They started doing a little bit of that last week and incorporating that, uh, that, that, that read option in there, and it certainly has paid off. Second and what are we going to give them? We're going to give them five on that, and we'll call it uh, four. Second and six, if you will, for the Bruins from the 38-yard line. Twins to the wide side. That's the right. Here's the snap. Hand off the fence. Ball's on the ground, but Pettigrew is able to fall on at the exchange. Not clean that time. It'll end up being a yard loss back to the 40-yard line, setting up third and a long seven for the Bruins. A little bit of confusion there. Finch thought that Pettigrew was going to keep it. Pettigrew thought that Finch was going to take it. Every now and again, that can happen. Ball on the ground. No harm, no foul. Just a loss of down. You know, that's one thing the Bruins have done a really good job of for the, almost the entire season so far, protecting the football, not giving the football to the other team. That is a huge deal, especially when you're trying to knock off a ranked team in a higher classification. Third down, here's Pettigrew under pressure, finds his man. That seals at the 41-yard line, breaks a tackle, bulldozes the defender. He'll come up short of the first down, but... It gives you an opportunity here, and you're sitting at about the 35-yard line, so you can either try to pin them right here inside that 10-yard line. It's too far for a field goal. That would be 52 yards. It's fourth and two, and it looks like Coach Strapp's going to leave this Bruin offense on the field. Yeah, I like this call here. Uh, they've proven they could do it with fourth and short. They've proven it all night, and the whole playbook is wide open now. Seals has really been involved this second Man, half. You've got Barksdale in the right slot. Give me that motion sweep. To Barksdale once again. We'll see what happens. Let's see if the Bruins try to draw the Tigers off with a hard count. Seven seconds left to go here on the play clock. Three, two, the snap. Here we go. Play action. 
under pressure. Pettigrew steps up in the pocket, nearly slips, falls forward, and it's going to depend on the marker, and I don't think he got it. He's going to be about a half yard short. He slipped a little bit and fell, and it may have cost him. Yeah, once he steps up right here, he's never able to regain his balance right there. You see it. He tries to go forward and falls forward. Going to be about a yard yeah, short. Yeah, it'll be closer to a yard short, so Hardin County holds. I go for that, too. Because if you pick that first down up, you're pretty much going to run the quarter out uh, more than likely because we're exactly three minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, I go for that, too, all day long. Yeah, I really, really like the call there. Uh, not a lot to lose because, again, I mean, a, a punt, you know, depending on how good and accurate you are to the sideline, it may only net you 10 yards. All right, this Bruin defense needs a stop this time. Exactly 15 minutes left to play in this football game. Three minutes left to go in the third quarter. Smith from the gun. Here's the snap. Give off to the left side. Has some room. Picks up eight yards on first down up to the 43-yard line for the Tigers. Yeah, a nice hole opened up here. You'll see Raleigh Seals. He thinks that someone was kind of holding him down. He's looking to the white hat in the back there and saying, look, man, what's going on right here? Uh, but a nice hole opened up. Big seven, eight-yard gain for the Tigers there. Second and two for Hardin County. Two and a half minutes left to go here in the, in the third quarter. USJ leading 24-14. to 14. Hardin County scored the first seven before the Bruins ran off 24 in a row after that. Here's a handoff off of right tackle. Needed two, got three up to the 45-yard line. That's going to be... Tylen Irvin on the carry up to the 45 for the first down for the Tigers. Yeah, you're going to see a, a handful of Bruins in there. First level was pinned, was broken before that happened. That's Sam McMillan and Gang making the tackle, but you see the first contact's not made till three or four yards after the after the carry. The gain, huh? After the gain, that's unfortunate. Two oh five left to go here in the third quarter. A great crowd here tonight, by the way. Carlock Nissan Stadium, first and ten for the Tigers. Smith straight back, going for it all down the left sideline and overthrows his intended receiver. Outstanding coverage that time for the Bruins. Safety comes over to help Will Horton in place anyway, but a nice job that time of Ryan Hutchinson coming over from his safety spot to help. Yeah, that was it. he was throwing into double coverage no matter what. That was going to be a tough play. Threw it a little bit deep. Uh, no problem there. Lost it down, second and ten. I'm more worried. When, when, when it comes to, to the Hardin County passing game, I'm more concerned in between the hashes. That's where they've done their damage. Is and, but, which, by the way, is the mark of a good quarterback because you've got to have confidence and a big arm to do that, and he's done that. So I'm defending those hashes and more the on the inside. Here's man in motion to the left side. Here's Smith wanting to find his man out in the flat and throws it behind him. I think that was just, he realized if he led his man correctly, he was going to lead it right into Parker Barnes and he was going to get destroyed. That was actually a smart play that time by Carter Smith. Yeah, you see it here. Parker, I, th I see, I think they're on two different pages here because you can see Parker talk to him right afterwards. I think he wanted him to shoot up the field uh, just a little bit there and he kind of ran out to the flat and stayed. Big third down for the Bruins. They need to get a stop right here. Hardin County with a little bit of momentum. 146 left to go here in the third. Third and 10 for the Tigers from their own 45-yard line. Trips to the left. Smith in the gun. Here's the snap. Finds his man on the wheel route and taken down immediately after the reception. Just shy of midfield outstanding job that time. I do believe, Chuck, if I'm right about that, was that Sam McMillan yeah, again? Yeah, Sam McMillan once again hit him hard like a ton of bricks. You give up the four-yard gain there, but now you've got big decision time as Hardin County's on their own side of the 50 here. Ball right at the 49. What do you do here if you're Coach Smith? He has left his offense on the field in his own territory. Down 10 with a minute 10 left to go. If the Bruins can get a stop here, they will get the ball in Hardin County territory. Here we go. Smith from the gun, straight back. Now under pressure, rolling to his left. Under pressure once again, and he is going to go down once again. Is that Sam McMillan, Chuck? Yes, it is. Sam McMillan would not be stopped there. Unbelievable pursuit. Smith was rolling around trying to find an open guy. You cannot say about the, enough things about the coverage for the defensive backs tonight. You see no one open anywhere. And look at Sam McMillan coming right in, wrapping him up. Smith goes down, turnover on downs. Bruins now have the ball, the 40-yard line. What did my line. man Mike Keith say? Ah! 
<laughs> when he does his sack call, you never heard of him. It ain't oh, quite yeah. that horrible. Cro- yeah, yeah, the Kroger <laughs> my, sack I'm, for cash. I, I'm, I'm running well, low. My throat's a little yeah, bit Yeah, Mike's a professional. He didn't do like three shows a day. Barely better, just a little better than me, I'd say. Here we go, Pettigrew from the gun, straight up the pitch, has a huge hole right up the middle, running up the right hash, and all the way down to the 23-yard line for a Thompson and Smith first down. What an answer for the Bruins. Yeah, huge first down play. I've got a got a new updated roster sheet from one of our Hardin County fans. Hey. They texted it to my phone. Thank you. The problem, I'll, I'm more than happy to send it to you, but you got to have your Zoom fingers ready. Zoom fingers. Here we go. Is that anything like spirit fingers? Yeah, it Finch. is. Finch. Off the right side, nothing doing. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, second and ten. What might be the last play of this third quarter. Don't know if I'd snap it again. I'd go and let that I, clock run. Not a reason to. I, I, I doubt they will. You're down to 17 seconds here in the third quarter, and they are not going to snap this game or this ball again before the third quarter expires. So, after three quarters of football, <laughs> Woo, baby girl. the Bruins are knocking on the door once again, and they lead 24 to 14 over state rank Hardin County on Worthy Road Studio. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Man, this is what you practice for. This is what it's all about. This is what I always tell you when you're working out at 5 30 in the morning and bear crawling and Doing wind sprints, this is the 12 minutes that it's all about. The Bruins have an opportunity here to make a huge statement in this classification if they can hold on for 12 more minutes and they don't look like a team who's trying to hold on. They look like a team who's trying to deliver a knockout blow. First and 10 for the Bruins. Here's Finch strung out. Watch that. He's going to lose seven yards. They'll give him forward progress, but it'll still be a six-yard loss back to the 30-yard line. Yeah, really good pursuit there uh, by number two on, on that one. Uh, that's Kevin Tarver, Jr. He had that sniffed out. That's the one thing you don't want to see. Lose it down, but don't lose yardage there. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. But you hold on to that football like he did. Big third. What are we calling this, 16? 16 and a yeah, half. Yeah, and I don't think they're in field goal range right now. So it's either two plays to get 16 or a big chunk here on third. Pettigrew from the gun. Twins to his right. Single wide receiver. Play action. Step back. Looking. Going for it all on the post. Looking for Sane and overshot him. Intended for Davis Sane. He had three defenders around him, but he's 6'5 with a long reach. I don't mind that at all. Just a little about over the outstretched hands of, of his receiver, Sane. Uh, but great job of blocking by that offensive line. Step up in the pocket. Gave him a little time. Uh, plenty of time. That ball just floated a little bit on Pettigrew. And this is interesting. So here we're going to see what the Bruins do. They looks like they're going to punt. Okay. I, I got a problem with this. They've tried to pin them deep here. Now they split. They uh, Well, now it looks like they're going to go back into the offense. But that's English out there. <laughs> Let's see. Or is that Barksdale? No, it's English. Here's, here's English, and, and he flips it back to Wallace, who's going to lose another three or four yards, all, actually about seven or eight yards. They'll spot that ball at the 41-yard line. So not the way the Bruins wanted to start this fourth quarter. 11-02 left to go in this football game, and Hardin County clinging to life with the football at their own just inside their 40-yard, we'll call it the 38, depending on the spot, yeah, uh, from the 38-yard line. So the Bruins not able to put any points on the board that time, and they'll need that defense to have another good stop. Yeah, they lost about 22 yards there in two possessions. Not the right direction to go there for the Bruins. They're going to lean on this defense one more time. 
Smith from the gun, twins to each side. Here's the snap, straight back, looking, looking under pressure now, and he's taken down by the one and only double nickel Ty O'Neill with his second sack of the night. Ty O'Neill is having a game. He got around that edge, and he got right to Smith, right on his blind side. He had nothing to do there but go down. He is absolutely wearing the left side of that Hardin County offensive line out all night long, way outsized. But it doesn't mean a thing. He has been doing that to offensive tackles all season long. They'll call it a loss of four back to the 34-yard line with 10.25 left to go. Here's the snap handoff up the middle. Can't break the tackle. Still on his feet. Now swarmed under by a host of Bruin defenders. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage initially. But it'll be actually a a yard short of the original line of scrimmage. That's going to set up third and 11 for Hardin County from their own 37-yard line with exactly 10 minutes left to go in this football game. Who do you think wraps him up with his left arm there as they're running around uh, coming off the block? That's Ty O'Neill again stopping the forward momentum. He doesn't let go once he has him. Now, Brooks Jones and a handful of other Bruins come in there and help him clean him up, but Ty O'Neill is having a fourth quarter. You know, you thought for sure that one place the the USJ uh, or Hardin County might have the advantage is in the trenches in this game, and that has not been the case tonight. Here we go, third and 11. Look at that. Close covers off the line of scrimmage. Smith with the snap, looking for his man on the left side, and perfectly defended that time by Jace Barksdale. Holy cow, watch this one, Chuck. Look at this. It looked like Smith had something cooking with his slot receiver. 15 and cuts in, and here's a beautiful pass, and jumping that round and stepping in front of it is Jace Barksdale with another amazing play that time on the right hash, and he's forcing a three and out here for the Tigers. I don't know what this kid can't do. I haven't seen it on the football field. I mean, I haven't looked at his calculus grades and things like that, but he is an unbelievable football player. Low snap, high kick. It's a good one taken at the 30-yard line, but hits the ground, and Hardin County falls on on the football. The break the Tigers needed, they just got. The Bruins could have ran some time off this clock with this 10-point lead. Instead, the defense is going to have to play big with 9.22 left in this football game. And that was Barksdale. That was Barksdale. That one kind of got up there. Remember, it's been drizzling all night long as well, and that ball was up in the air a little bit. Barksdale can't hold on to it, and the Tigers get the football first and 10 at the Bruin 24 yard line holy smokes it's never easy no it's not it's more fun that way right oh that's what they tell me lean on that I like it easy (laughs) lean on that defense one more time we're looking at you all right Tiger offense here is Hardin County Smith with the snap to give off of right tackle he'll pick up about five yards on first down on that carry that time Tylen Irvin picks up five yeah, nice, nice run here. Hole opens up, up to the right side. Uh, you know, he's down as soon as contact made. Unfortunately, he's five yards down the field before that happens. I believe that was Ryan Hutchison in on the tackle and run support. Holy cow, here we go. We got the drama we were looking for, Walker. Second and six for the Tigers from the 20-yard line from the gun. Here is Smith. Here's the snap. Play action. Looking for his man on the right hash and just outside of the outstretched hands of Ryan Weeks. Just off his fingertips. Little bit off that ball and he may have six on that right hash. Instead, it'll be third and six for Hardin County. And if they can't get this here, you got, I don't know what their kicking game is like. It would be 37 yards from here and that would make it a one possession game, but there's a lot of work to do right now here on third down for this Bruin defense. Yeah, he had a step uh, against Jones there, just a little overthrown, and he was still almost able to bring that in. Big third down stop needed for the Bruins. 8.15 left to go in this football game. Ten seconds left on the play clock. Hardin County needs to hurry to get this playoff. Four, three, man in motion, and here's a snap. That had to be a false start on Hardin County. Yeah, definitely early movement. You're going, to see was, it on this yeah. left, you're going to see it on this left side there as the man goes in motion. Yeah, that was all about the play clock that time. Tried to hurry and didn't, wasn't able to get it. Got the false start. It'll back it up. And third and six now becomes third and 11. And more importantly, makes that now a 42-yarder if you're trying to make this a one-possession game if they don't pick it up here. So we'll see what happens now for the Tigers. Third and 11 from the Bruin. 25-yard line with 8.14 left to go in this football game. 
Yeah, and 42 is a long way in high school. One of the biggest plays of the game, one of the biggest plays of the year right here for these Bruins. Here's the snap. Trips to the left. Smith looking, looking. Time now stepping up in the pocket. 25-20. Breaks a tackle. Still going. Lowers his head. And all the way down to the 10-yard line. He needed 11. He got about 14 that time. And Smith, this time, doing it with his feet. Yeah, first time we've really seen him move like this. Uh, he found a little bit of a seam right up here in the middle. Nobody opened. That's because nobody was over it. Yeah. Great coverage by the Bruins. And Smith just wanted it on that. Yeah, he, he found a game. lane. That was outstanding coverage that time by the Bruins. We have a timeout. And let's see who took it. The Bruins took it. That is their first of the half. We'll take it with them with 7.52 left to go in this football game. Your USJ Bruins leading Hardin County, and they're on the doorstep right now. 24-14 to 14 USJ on Worthy Road Studio. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. All right, here we go. 7.52 left to go in this football game, and what a game it has been. Holy cow. Yeah, this game has given us just about everything we could want. First and goal for the Tigers from the 10. Twins to your short side. Smith from the gun. Here's the snap. Handoff straight up the middle, seven, six, five, and then finally Russell down just inside the five-yard line. Gain of five, maybe six. Second and goal from just inside the five for the Bruins. Yeah. I mean, for the Tigers, excuse me. Uh, other scorers of interest update, Union City has opened up that lead. They now lead TCA 42 to 19 there in the Golden City. Second and goal for the Tigers. They'll spot that ball right on the four-yard line. So second and goal from the four. Hardin County trailing by 10. Here's the snap, handoff, and swallowed up for a big loss. About three or four different Bruins. You pick one. I don't care. Yeah, I, I saw Noah Spencer in there. I saw number 21, Ryan Hutchison, in there. And I also saw number 24 getting the party started there was Brooks Jones. Yeah, Jones polished it off there, and that's going to bring up third and goal. Let's see where they officially spot this football. Be at the, the eight? I haven't seen the ball spotted yet. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I can't see spotted it there at the okay. line of scrimmage. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's going to be about the eight-yard line. So third and goal, six and a half minutes left to go from the eight-yard line. Twins to each side. Here's Smith looking to his left, looking for the fade in the corner of the end zone. In and out of the, the hands of his intended receiver. That was Braden Wilkes. Had his man beat. Should have been a touchdown. Couldn't hold on to it. And the Bruins hold here. Ryan Hutchison broke broke this touchdown, potential touchdown reception up. Look at the hit right here, uh, no, knocking that ball out. I think that ball came out of his hands. He, he may have, but it looks like that ball came out of his hands. Now for the Tigers, Nolan Foster on to try to make this a seven-point game from the right hash. It'll be a 17-yarder. The kick is up, and it is... Good, making a 27-yarder, and your new score with 6.19 left to go in this football game is USJ 24 and Hardin County 17 on Worthy Road Studios. Football is here. Get touchdown savings at McCoy's Heating and Air. Cooler weather is coming. Tackle the season ahead with McCoy's and be comfortable this season. To get your furnace ready, we are now offering one-time cleaning for only $90. Score big. Call McCoy's and schedule your $90 cleaning today. Call 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. 
I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. Shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. You're in for an exciting finish here. 6-19 left to play in this football game. The Bruins clinging to a 24-17 lead over state-ranked Hardin County. Here's your kickoff. It's high and taken at the 25-yard line by Barksdale up to the 35 and eventually goes down there, 10-yard return. And the Bruins in business from their own 35 with 6.15 left in the game. Yep. Eat the clock up. Whatever that looks like, whatever you got that runs about 25 seconds off the clock every single time, that's what you want to see now. Of course, you know, I, and that's time. Be aggressive. You, you, you know what I mean? Uh, this team, USA wants to make a statement. I think they already have, but you got to finish it off here. Let's see if the Bruins can do it. Pettigrew from the gun. Got two in the backfield with him now. Here's a give to Finch straight up the middle. Look at that. Look at the acceleration through the offensive line. He'll pick up six yards on first down, and they have continued to chew up the interior of this Hardin County defensive line, the offensive line for the Bruins, especially in run support. Look at that. Look at that kick out block by this Bruins offensive line. Yeah, and coming from the fullback position there was number zero, Raleigh Seals, uh, who's, who's opening that hole up even more for Finch to run through. Really great run there. And that was Second Rory and Jones, who did a great Great job of opening up that hole in that A-gap. Second and four, a long four for the Bruins. Pettigrew from the gun, given to Finch once again. He's hit, keeps those feet spinning, and picks up about two yards. That'll set up a huge third down for the Bruins for their own 41-yard line. Call it the, maybe the, yeah, we'll call it the 42, a long two and a half here for the Bruins. And boy, they can go a long way to securing a win if they could pick up a first down right here, Chuck. They don't want to have to punt the ball back. No, you definitely don't want to punt the ball. And even if you don't come away with a score, which you would love, you would love to at least, you know, take another three minutes off this clock, give Hardin County the ball back yeah. with a minute and a half left. I'd love to find a way to get the ball in the hands of Jace Barksdale here, maybe out of motion on the jet again. We'll see. Pettigrew from the gun, gives it to Finch, bounces it out, cuts back, has a Thompson and Smith first down. I see it, and we're going to get a hold, I do believe. There's definitely a flag here. See if we can find this one. Oh, boy, that is tough because that would have been a big conversion. And, well, guys, I, I'm sorry, but I, I'm watching in re instant replay, and I watch every Bruin blocking on the left side of that hash. You can watch it for yourself, Chuck. There was not a hold there. I didn't see not one. Not one person that even came remotely close to holding on that. Yeah, it was the hold the official call. Mark that Went at five minutes if you want to go back and watch for yourself at the five-minute mark of this football game. On that holding call, there absolutely wasn't one. Yeah, not one that I saw unless there was something weird downfield uh, when Seals kicked out for the block, unless there was something we didn't see. I don't yeah. know where it was on the line. Boy, that's a huge call with four and a half. Now third and 11 for the Bruins from the gun. Swing pass out in the flat. Completed to Finch. Still on his feet. Finds the lane. Gets the first down on his feet. Still going and into Tiger territory. Laying bodies out along the way for a Thompson and Smith first down on the swing pass. Perfectly called perfectly executed by these Bruin receivers. Look at the block right there by Barksdale. Here's a kick out by Raleigh Seals. Sane does his job. Finch does the rest. Holy cow, what a huge play for this Bruin offense on third and 11. Finch is not a good time to bring down. Unbelievable blocking there, but let the bodies hit the floor when he runs it. You said it so great. He laid them out. It took two people to bring them down. He still got four yards after a 22-yard gain. 3.50 left to go in this football game. Bruin with a fresh set of downs. Three wide receiver set. Finch to the left of Pettigrew. Here's the snap. Finch straight up the middle. Bounces out, and he'll end up getting about a yard on the play. 
Now the timeout situation for Hardin County, they have three, or excuse me, they have two, and they just burned one of them. They are down to one timeout and 334 left to go in this football game. Your score with 334, USJ 24 and Hardin County 17 on Worthy Road Studio. Brooksy's Barn, locally owned and operated for 40 years in Jackson. Huge Southern Buffet at its finest or choose our drive through window service. Look over our beautiful lake and enjoy a great meal. Come on by. We are sure you will enjoy our friendly staff and great selection of food that we have from pork, fish, beef, chicken, not to mention lots of veggies. We also have a fantastic salad bar and a selection of scrumptious desserts. Y'all come. Uh, Chuck says I've lost my mind. There's well, a decent think, chance that's probably true. You think we're playing anybody in the history of the world listening to Three, Slipknot besides you? 34 left to go in this football game. Bruins on the move. Second and nine from the Tiger. 46-yard line. Getting the play from the sideline. Pettigrew from the gun. Hand off the fence, straight up the middle, spins out of a tackle, keeps his feet going down to the 40-yard line, make it the 39, and that's going to be about a yard and a half shy of a first down. That should have been about a two- or three-yard gain, and it looks like Hardin County is going to call their final timeout, Chuck Walker, right here. So if the Bruins can convert this third down in short, they could extensively run the clock out of this game. We'll find out if they can. With 3.16 left to go in the game, USJ 24 and Hardin County 17 on Worthy Road Studio. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Nissan and Carlock Prestige, the name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the path. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Oh, look at that crowd. Look at that student section fired up. They can smell it. Smell the baby powder from here. <laughs> yeah, you can. I Third you. and two for the Bruins. Pettigrew from the gun. Hardin County nearly jumping off here. Play clock down to 14. Snap, give to Finch. He's stoned at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward down to the 39, but it's not enough. That's going to set up fourth and about two yards. And the Tigers cannot stop this clock. Yet we've clock, they just got through saying that was Hardin County's last time out. I think the Bruins called timeout here, did they? The, the, the clock know, literally it, just said before that that Hardin County had no timeouts left. You know, the one thing you could do maybe is, is you know, talk about this. If you are going to go for it here, what you want to do, set it up. Maybe let the clock tick for a little bit if you do that. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe Hardin County had another timeout and the board was wrong. Well, if that, the board had been wrong because the way you would handle that is you, you would let, let, that, all the way you let that play clock run down. And then you would call that. That's right. Yeah, so they're, they're, yeah, that had to be the situation. They had the timeouts wrong. That's all it is. Now, here's what we do know. Hardin County cannot stop the clock again. So if the Bruins can get this first down, they should be able to salt this game away. It's the biggest play of the year for the Bruins, and it's coming your way. 20. Twins to each side. Finch flanking Pettigrew to his right. Now seals into the backfield. Here's the snap. Option to the wide side, calling his own number and falling forward for a Thompson and Smith. First down is Berkeley Pettigrew down to the 34-yard line, and there is absolutely nothing that Hardin County do, can do to stop this clock. They have no timeouts left. Yeah, Pettigrew ran with that pitch that we saw earlier. Looked like he was going to throw it to Finch there. Decided to keep it himself. Fell down inbounds, which is important. And that right there should <laughs> I'd say ice so. this. He fell down at the right hash. Ice. <laughs> <laughs> he was inbounds, wasn't he? <laughs> he was inbounds. 
<laughs> well, I'm going to hit you with the theater of the mind. Well, uh, no, no. That's <laughs> been taken. And, uh, you don't want it. No, I'm, no I'm, I'm good. I promise I don't. Two and a half minutes left to go in this football game. First and ten for the Bruins who need to hold on to this football. And nothing more. Hand off to Finch. Met at the line of scrimmage. Still going. And finally taken down after a gain of about one. But that's not really the goal here <laughs> is to get it, is to do that right now. It's all about salting off this last 132 seconds. Bruins. This would be one of the biggest upsets in the state this, this, this week. I don't think there's any way around it. Bruins are a fantastic team. But this is a ranked 4A team who's just obliterated everything in their path lately. Yeah, th they've given up, what, 13 points on the season? Something crazy like that. Of course, like the that. Bruins have haven't given, only up, given up 36 either. in four games. They're having yeah. nine points a game uh, given up. This uh, is a David season. Goliath coming into tonight. We all know that. What a great effort by USJ. So the, the Bruins can't salt the whole thing away, but there wouldn't be much time left. Here's Finch. It's not going to matter because he's going to have a first down all the way back, down, all the way down to the 24-yard line. A Thompson and Smith first down, and that, my friends, is going to do it. I'm going to tell you something. You, you can't see it because a lot of games have to play out, but I'll tell you who's making an early, early want for the WNWS Player of the Week, an early submission, maybe Kevin Finch. His game has yeah, been certainly possible. We only tonight. see one game here, so we'll, no, I know, we'll, I know. we'll weigh it he, out. He's making an early push. But Bruin fans smell it. They know what it is. Hardin County fans getting ready to roll out and head back to Savannah because there's a minute left in this football game, and there is nothing the Tigers can do about this. And the best formation of all, victory formation, the snap. Pettigrew will take a knee at the 30-yard line. And it's only a matter of time now, down to 48 seconds. What a monster win for Michael Strapp and this Bruin football team. Yeah, when you when you think you can, when a team doesn't quit, they're really hard to beat. That's in anything you ever do in life. This USJ team said, we don't really care what the odds are tonight. We're coming out and playing. And I'll tell you, they've done it for four complete quarters. Bruins have to snap the ball one more time. Here's the snap. Pettigrew takes a knee, and that's it. That is it. That will do it. Mixing it up a little bit, these two teams, and it's done. The clock running. Ten seconds. And these two teams making their way to the middle of the field. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my happy duty to report to you that your final score from Kirkland Field, Carlock Nissan Stadium, your USJ Bruins, 24 and Hardin County 17. Give it up to our man Bryce Mott. He called this one early. He called this one before kickoff. Bryce had a gut feeling. Bryce was right. They call him the Nostradamus of high school football. He let you all know before the ball was in the air. Great job, my man Bryce. Way to know football. You got that right. He haul watcher. Yeah. Eat that one. Oh, yeah, hillbillies want to call up. Not oh, Billy's. Bri Billy. Hick Billy. Hick Just Billy won. wants to call up. Great job, Bryce Mott. Bryce Mott with the great pick that time. And the Bruins, 24-17 to victors over Hardin County. Congratulations. Let's go down yeah. on the field where George Tennyson so is with Coach Michael Stroud. Coach Michael, head coach USJ Bruins, Kirkland Field. What a great – some would call up, said Coach. I don't, but some would. What's going through your mind right now? Man, proud for these kids, man. They, they came out this week and, and just, you know, I, I told them everybody, ain't, ain't nobody counting on you. Ain't nobody going to pick you to win. And, uh, man, they, they, they came focused and ready to practice this week and execute that game plan. Just driven. Just never gave up. Driven in the trenches. Hats off to you, your assistant coaches. Congratulations. I know you got a lot of celebrating to do here. Hardin County came in here, just knocked them upside the head and didn't let up. Yeah, yeah that, proud for these kids. Proud for this community yeah. and moving on. Congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. I'll see you Wednesday night. Thank you, brother. Back to you guys up top. Thank you, George, for that. And thank you and congratulations to the victorious Michael Strapp and his USJ Bruins. 
Now that was fun. That's got to feel that was so fun. good. Imagine what those kids or coaches are feeling right now. One of my favorite things they do here at uh, Kirkland Field is right after this talk here, they're meeting right around the 25-yard line. As soon as this talk's over, all the student section, all the student bodies are going to get out there with these guys and celebrate. But you could feel this tonight. It was electricity in the air for four whole quarters. And get of Hardin County. They didn't quit either. They had some big plays. Oh, they're legit. They are legit. This Bruins team is something to be reckoned with. You know, I was, okay, you know, they had two wins over two bad teams, but what happens when a Hardin County comes to town? What will you do then? It's occurring to me, especially going forward here, that the bigger the test, the better this team responds. What yeah. a win tonight. And to, to win the battle of the trenches against a team like that with the size that they have, with a quarterback as good as they have, with a running game as good as they have, with a coach as good as they have in Matthew Smith, to come away with this victory tonight is one of the biggest wins this program has had on this field. Yeah, I, I can't argue any, any part of that. Not a region game, but, man, this game right here is just letting everybody in the region know, hey, guys, look. We're here. We're ready to play with anybody. Yeah, left not on the a region schedule. win, but a monster statement win statement for anybody win. going forward. Now, what does this do? I, it, that's it's coming soon. But that Thursday night matchup in a couple of weeks between USJ and Jackson Christian, who stomped ECS. I think the final was fifty-six to seven, uh, somewhere like that. What? I mean, <laughs> it, it, I had this game server. I knew this was going to be the game of the year for us, for what we're doing to watch. This one's pretty darn close right now. This is the leader in the clubhouse early for you and I, but I'm real excited. Two great teams just separated by a couple of miles between one another. The, you know, these kids see each other at Los Portales. They see each other, you know, walking around. This will be a huge game. And was it three weeks from now? Los Portales. Uh, you you got to have a kid in private school, dude. That's, ex that's where they live. They okay. go to school, they live, they live at your house, and they eat at Los Portales. That's all they do. That's literally I it. I got you. Boy, look at that. Look at that scene down there. Just happy for everybody involved here with USJ. So here's what we're going to do. We'll take this quick break. We'll come back, and we'll put a bow on it here from Kirkland Field. Again, your final score, USJ 24 and Hardin County 17 on Worthy Road Studios. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. If you work outside or in a facility with no AC, or you're just struggling with this year's heat wave, it can really take a toll on your body and health. At Live Hydration Drip Spa, we can help you recover with our Beat the Heat special for only $59. Call or visit us online today to set your appointment. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Home furnishings, appliances, bedding, and so much more. Kaufman's. At the Bypass and Oil Well Road in Jackson. Home furnishings for every room in your home. Custom upholstery options too with professional advice. Major appliances from America's top name brands. Mattresses and bedding accessories. Outdoor living and grilling too. And our fully stocked warehouse helps prevent supply chain delays. Kaufman's for your life. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way, peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. At Nest Realty Jackson, connections and relationships are at the heart of everything we do. We wake up every day with the goal of helping our agents build trust, relationships, and community. Let's connect. And welcome back to Kirkland Field. Here what it is all over with. And the celebration continues here on the campus at USJ after a phenomenal football game. But had, had its swings. You know, Hardin County came out, got off go a 7 nothing lead. USJ scores the next 24. Don't score again. 
and Hardin County scores the final 10 of this game, but it's not enough. Your final score tonight from Carlock Nissan Stadium, USJ 24, Hardin County 17. Chuck, your final thoughts? I'm still in shock a little bit. I wish I had something to say other than that. Really proud of these coaches, really proud of these kids, really proud for the student body, the student section, the parents. I know how amazing this is for a parent to get a win like this when you didn't think so. I literally could not have been a better night for the Bruins. So really just happy all around. And it sets up so good for us for the rest of the year because, you know, we're going to get to watch a lot of quality football. There's worse things in the world, worse ways to get paid in this world. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know that they'll see a better team than this. I it, I can't say about JCS, your Jackson right. Christian, if you right. will. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, I know the uh, the emotion in that game will be you know, higher than this one. Uh, Chuck, great job. Oh, uh, if you, you as well. If you don't mind, I want to ask George uh, a question, if he can get those headsets Absolutely. from me. Absolutely. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow at the party. And we will see party. you tomorrow at the party. Thank you so much. Great job tonight. Uh, George, I wanted to bring you in because we weren't able to hear your interviews with, okay. with Coach Strapp. Uh, so, especially right there after the game had gone final, uh, wanted to know what uh, Coach Strapp had to say. He's just super excited for the kids, the community. Obviously, he put in so much prep, you know, hard work. It goes uh, unsung, so to speak, for Coach. He's just uh, – I-, I admire him. Hats off to what he's done with his, with his faculty, with his staff, with his players, with the leadership that he's – um, from him all the way down. I mean, he just has and, – and we talked Wednesday night on camera, off camera, and I said, I don't care who comes in to, into uh, a Kirkland field. They won't be as prep, you know, as, as y'all will. Y'all will be ready for a war, for a fight in the trenches. And I said, you'll have your kids where they won't give up. And, and that's exactly what happened tonight. And, you know, I know it's a kind of a shock to some, but I knew these kids would be prepared to play a hard football game. All right, so your your first game in on the yeah. side patrolling the sidelines. How about it? Did you it's a it? whole different view down there. Well, oh, absolutely. I saw. I got to see firsthand uh, a catch that I didn't think was a catch that was called a catch. Then I saw right up close on a pass interference call that wasn't called. And I, you know, I was like, hey, you know, wait, whoa, whoa, it's different down here. I can see it right here. So, and uh, I'm pretty emotional anyway. But these kids are. I'm just so happy for, like Coach said, the community for the USJ Bruins, the parents. I mean, this is a big win for this uh, for these kids. I think George. I think he's excited as players are. Oh man, that, yeah, that's well, I'm, I'm down there. I'm down Play of the game. Oh wow! The one-handed circus catch in the end zone by Jace Barksdale in the I, first half. One of the best plays I've seen. I was five feet from it, and he literally caught the ball and drug his back foot in, and, and both referees at different angles saw it and kind of gave that signal that he drug yeah. his foot and it was yeah. uh and nfl that's not a catch but in college and high school that's, that's a catch that's baby catch. That's, and that's all what, you yeah. got to do it says he doesn't play for the titans and he plays yeah. for usa yeah. give him six baby He's not getting paid yet what but, a yeah. play you know you say yet and you might be right about oh, it because there's kids. not much that young man can't do uh but just like we talked game. before he's so exciting on both sides of the football uh, just, you know, his feet never stops turning. He just works so hard. And he's – I'm down there with him on the sidelines, and he's a leader there too. I mean, he's pumping his kids up, you know, after uh, Harden come in and scored that late – I mean, touchdown in the third quarter. He was like, we're not going to let this get us down. Let's play like we're, you know, ahead. And it's a leadership role. So these young men look up to that, look up to him. And very well deserved. Great job, George. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate it, buddy. To be here. All right. We're going to put a bow on this bad boy for my friend George Tennyson, our sideline reporter, our color commentator, Chuck Walker, Paul Schulze, and the entire team here at Worthy Road Studios. And would I be remiss? I sure would if I forgot about my producer, director, back at Jackson's News Talk 101.5 FM. Bryce Mott did a great job. Here's the deal. The postgame show is about to start, and he's going to take you. He's got about 35 minutes. He's going to take you all the way until 10 o'clock. So give him a call and tell him about the game that you were at and update him with those scores as well. Give him a Great call job, at 423-8101 and 1-800-304-1015. So for everybody here from Worthy Road Studios, one more time, your final USJ24 in Hardin County 17. Have a great night, everybody.